Good day, everyone. We are now going to start our webinar. So welcome to our webinar entitled Strategy and Tactics, Moving Student Research Forward in the New Normal. We are grateful of your presence and we thank you in advance for your attendance. To our Regional Director, Dr. Lunida S. Calagi, Chief Education Program Specialist, Dr. Julia Felisa C. Martinez, Chief Administrative Officer, Ms. Alma C. Patron, OIC Supervising Education Program Specialist, Mr. Ami C. Saavedra, Education Supervisors, uh, to our uh, Distinguished Resource Person, Dr. Hinaro V. Hapos, School Presidents and Key Officials, uh, CHED Faculty Scholars, Research Directors and Coordinators, Graduate School Deans, Faculty, Students, as well as the dissert, uh, thesis and dissertation advisors. And we also have our participants from our partner agencies and to all our part, our online participants. Maayong buntag sa tanan. It's a great day here in Butuan and I hope you also have the same nice weather in your area. I hope you are all healthy and in great shape especially po in this time of our situation that we are in crisis. So today, we are going to talk about research. For being in the higher education sector, it is a vital element that will help our community move forward. Research is a major driving force in finding effective solutions to society's problems in all aspects. But considering the pandemic crisis we are in at present, conducting research has become very challenging because of the restrictions. Today, let us once again be motivated to pajak or move forward as we claim victory for the Philippine higher education, especially in the field of research with our invited distinguished guest Speaker, which will be introduced later. Good morning once again and welcome. Before we will proceed, may I call Mr. Neil Von Ronquillo, our Chedra Accountant PTS3, for some reminders and acknowledgement of participants. Sir Von. Yes, thank you, Dr. Fred. Hello and once again, good morning to all. It is my honor to acknowledge our online participants for today's webinar. As of the moment, we have about 291 individuals who have successfully pre-registered and expressed their interest on this webinar entitled Strategy and Tactics, Moving Forward, Moving Student Research Forward in the New Normal. Acknowledging our registered participants who are grouped accordingly. First, we have registered participants coming from various fields of expert expertise our graduate students, they compose the largest uh, percentage of the total registered participants for this webinar. Hello po, good morning ma'am and sirs. Thank you for gracing us today. Next, acknowledging the attendance of Chad Caragas K-12 Scholars. We have registered participants coming from the Agusan del Sur State College of Agriculture and Technology, from Caragas State University Main Campus and Kabadbaran Campus, from Father Saturnino Urios University, Hinatuan Southern College, Philippine Normal University, St. Michael College of Caraga, St. Vincent de Paul Diocesan College, from Surigao del Sur State University Main Campus, Cantilan Campus, and Glianga Campus. We also have uh, pre registered participants from Southway College of Technology, from Surigao State College of Technology Main Campus and Mainit Campus, and we also have K-12 Scholar from St. Paul University, Surigao. Hello po, moms and sirs. Show us your big smiles po. Ayan, I can feel your excitement and anticipation for this webinar. Next, in attendance today are the deans and faculty and staff of graduate school from different public and private higher education institutions. Good morning po, moms and sirs. Welcome po to this webinar. And lastly, we acknowledge our guest participants who have registered for this webinar. 
we have from the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines or USTP, Hasaan Campus in Misamis Oriental, from Ateneo de Davao University, from Bukidnon State University, Cebu Technological University Barili Campus, and from Mariano Marcos State University in Ilocos Norte. We are also happy for the participation of our dear teachers from the Department of Education across the region. Government agencies have also registered for this webinar. We have from the DSWD, PNP, TESDA, Local Government Units of Kabadbaran, Surigao, and Tubahon. To our guest participants, you are all acknowledged in this webinar. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the Ched Caraga Working Force, headed by our Dynamic Regional Director, Dr. Leonida S. Kalagi. We also have Chief Education Program Specialist, Dr. Julia Felisa C. Martinez, our Chief Administrative Officer, Ms. Alma C. Patron, all our Education Supervisors, and all other Administrative and Technical Support staff. Good morning, my dear colleagues in the Commission. And now, may I inform everyone of our, own, uh, of our house rules and some advisories for this webinar. House rules. Um, I request everyone to put your microphones on mute while listening. And as much as possible, ensure you are in a quiet area. May I request also everyone to rename yourself and add your office. Example, Ched Caraga underscore Newmart 1 in Pilio. Using of headset, earphones, with microphone is highly recommended. You may chat your questions. The Secretariat will take note of your questions in chat so that the concerns will be addressed in an, or in an orderly way. Advisory. The meeting will be recorded for filing purposes and for the benefit of those who are not currently in the meeting. Please do not disseminate the slides, documents to external stakeholders. And please wait for the documents or the slides or materials for official release. Lastly, please accomplish the post-evaluation form that will be given right after the discussion. This will serve as the basis for the distribution of your electronic certificate of attendance. That's it. Thank you. And once again, good morning and have a fruitful webinar to all. Thank you very much, Sir Vaughn. Uh, I know there are other school activities going on in your respective schools and in but one, uh, it's a local holiday today, no? but one is celebrating its town fiesta. So, but we are all here to participate in this activity and we thank you everyone for your participation. At this point, let us hear the message from our ever active and dynamic Chad Caraga Regional Director, Dr. Leonida S. Kalagi. I think uh, as of the moment, um, RD is uh, not yet available. No? She has just attended an activity, no? equally important activity with another HEI in the region. Ah, okay. Okay, RD, good morning po. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Fred. Hindi nyo sa ngayon matending uh, my style simultaneous meeting. So anyway, again, uh, thank you very much to everyone, to our presidents and heads and key officials of our HIs in the region, our student participants, the scholars and grantees of our program, scholarship programs and student financial assistance programs, no? In Chet Caraga, of course, other participants uh, from other regions. I have heard that there are also other other participants, no, online pers participants not from other regions, uh, uh, and uh, all who are with us now in this uh, morning's activity. Of course, uh, I would like to give my special mention to our uh, guests. Special guest lecturer, uh, uh, Dr. Hapos. Uh, I would like to thank uh, him for accommodating our invitation. Uh, to my chef, the team, Karaga, 
Uh, Chef Caraga team, magandang umaga sa ating lahat. No, good morning to everyone. Maayong buntag sa tanan. How are you there? I wish you all well and healthy despite of this pandemic crisis. No? So, we're all happy because we are, we have this uh, feeling of uh, uh, what do you call this? Victory. No? We claim victory. Uh, because we are celebrating the first National Higher Education Day, you know, uh, which was recently signed into law by you no know, less than His Excellency, you know, our dear President Rodrigo Duterte. And also, uh, it coincides with the celebration of the 27th you know, um, founding anniversary of the Commission on Higher Education. Now, I just would like to give you a brief uh, introduction no, of uh, Chad. Of course, there are some of you, no, and uh, you don't you don't understand uh, what Chad is. So, sabi nila si Alin Chad. Okay, so from simple beginning, 27 years ago, with limited and specific functions, the commission has evolved through the years into what it is today. So it is no longer a simple organization, but it is now uh, considered as a complex organization with uh, uh, many uh, activities, programs, and projects, and of course, the increase in the number of each manpower. So we could uh, say that it is now a complex organization, an agency whose mission is to promote equitable access and ensure quality and relevance of higher education institutions and their programs. It is just the fitting that we hold this week-long celebration. Actually, this is one of the lined-up activities you know, of the region for the whole uh, activity, for the whole week activity you know, that we have you know, in Chet Caraga. Because uh, all the regional offices have their own regional activities and this is one no, of our activity that we have uh, planned no, to do, okay? So, the theme of this week-long celebration is Pajak. Yeah. Pajak, moving forward, claiming victory for Philippine higher education. Pamantasan, pandayan tungo sa paunlaran. Which is, this is to celebrate the milestone that the Commission has achieved since its creation in 1994 through the passage of RA 7722, otherwise known as the Higher Education Act of 1994, with people who have been and who will continue to be part of this journey, notwithstanding the challenging circumstances brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. As we all know, education has been one of the most affected sectors by the pandemic. According to UNESCO, there are more than 1 billion students affected globally, which accounts for more than 60% of the student population and more than 15% of the world's population. In addition, there are several obstacles that emerge, such as difficulties in remote learning, disparity in access to technology or internet, and the role that schools play in the health and well-being of students. With these challenges, ensuring quality education does not come easy. However, because of our strong collaboration and, and unified efforts, we were we are and we will still be able to thrive and bring great transformations to the education system of the country that will continue to touch and change the lives of the youth and of all the people in the community. The methods of doing things may have changed, but the mission remains the same. Okay, so uh, the chair, uh, the Commission on Higher Education is mandated actually you know, to perform the following functions, which in research, in research, I would like to, to focus on research, no? uh, formulate and recommend development plans, 
policies, priorities, and programs and research. Recommend to the executive and legislative branches of government priorities and grants on higher education and research. Develop criteria for allocating additional resources such as resource and program development grants, scholarships, and other similar programs. Provided that this do not detract from the fiscal autonomy already enjoyed by colleges and universities and direct or redirect for post served researchers by institutions that higher learning to meet the needs of agro industrial and development. Okay. So in line with this, no, the CHED has adopted no actually the law unit. The National Higher Education Reform Agenda Number One and uh, Agenda Number Two. Now, uh, because Agenda Number One, Number Two has already superseded no Agenda Number One. So, in Agenda Number Two, no, it concentrates on research capability building by discipline. So, these are the priority research areas under the NERA Two. No, the program curricular studies and higher education, including assessment of present programs and curricula, for purposes of determining how this could be improved, the engineer as well as international benchmarking of best practices towards the development of new programs and curricula in leading edge policy uh, discipline. And then policy oriented studies, no, researches on the various dimensions of policy formulation. Monitoring and evaluation, focusing on but not limited to the following financing of HEI, cost sharing, economics, governance and management, accreditation and quality assurance, rationalization, internationalization, access and equity measures, and student financing models. And then also researches on quality and standards in the context of international rankings and global benchmarking, quality assurance system, equivalency, and redefining classifications of higher education institutions. And then also on technology education, model building studies, institutional development studies, manpower, demand and supply studies, graduate tracer studies, and other research topics considered by the Commission in response to the emerging needs of the country. Okay, for the information of all, the Commission also provides funds to support graduate scholarships and fellowships, but not limited to thesis and dissertation writing and travel grants for presentation of research papers in national and international conferences. It strengthens the visiting fellows program in order to assist promising HEIs in the request for research and excellence and conduct of research in identified priorities in the form of grant in aid or commissioned research grants which is available to researchers in both public and private HEIs who can and want to do research on the priority areas or for specific topics or issues and or problems which deems important you know, in the pursuit of CHED mandate. And so uh, I would also I would like to stress that uh, with, with certain degree of clarity and direction, of Philippine HEI I must play a vital role in nation building and global competitiveness of every graduate professional. And this can only be realized if the HEI produce quality, excellent, and competitive graduates through the following. Huh? The students are constantly provided better opportunities to learn the various methodologies and skills or techniques in research writing. Uh, the HEI exerts effort to make the student create various modular studies that are of novelty and with high sense of purpose, especially now during this pandemic crisis, and establish personal teaching conditions that allow faculty to create and implement innovative instructional growth and these conditions that are within the control of HEI will greatly help achieve such a good culture of quality and excellence. Um, this, uh, my dear fellow educators and researchers, we are now in the threshold of, of being globally competitive and our HEIs are the main vehicles by which we can break through this door. 
So the main challenge that us now is to maximize our resources and technical know-how in doing research and use our limited resources in implementing and undertaking researches that are beneficial, environmentally relevant, socially responsible, and technology-driven. So there are countless challenges in meeting the future needs of the institutional research community. In an era of flattened research budgets, we all know that you know, institutions do not have no? this, the budget and research. The overarching concern has become how more can be done with less. One approach is still novel but proven successful is the establishment of strategic alliances. No? And this can serve to maximize an institution's opportunity for success, especially with regard to research and training. And this alliance can also strengthen relationships among governments, economies, businessmen, and the academe or the Pfizer partnerships so with multilateral organizations, regional networks, and leading academic institutions. And I firmly believe that this webinar, uh, which uh, we invited uh, an expert, a maestro in the field of resource, no? would somehow give us all the opportunity uh, and the venue on how to strengthen no? our partnerships and international linkages. Because I understand that he had he had one of the research organization no, in, in Region 10. Uh, and of course, we will, we have to look at the interdisciplinary researches and the kind of researches that are to be uh, done by our students. Okay, so um, I, as a closing note, I wish to reiterate that what is expected of the HIs is excellence in education focused on relevant researches. That would give a significant impact to the developing economy like ours. No? Uh, we all know that it is the policy of the state to provide as much autonomy and economic freedom as enjoyed by our HEIs, provided that the domestic and global requirements are simultaneously met. Okay? So I assure you that the Commission will fully and wholeheartedly support any initiative that will enable all of you to achieve quality assurance on research as well as the highest standards of our higher education in the country. And I would like to pose this challenge to all of us, our students, researchers, educators, and school officials to continuously promote our common quest for quality and excellence not only in higher education but also in the performance of our duties and responsibilities as committed and dedicated leaders of our respective organizations in the promotion of responsible and highly competitive citizenry and as partners in nation building. So to the end of academic communities of all our HIs in Karaga region and to all the participants, researchers and educators, on behalf of the Commission in Higher Education, Karaga, thank you very much for your continuous support and cooperation in carrying out our mandates in the promotion of quality higher education in your respective higher education institutions despite the challenges brought about by this pandemic. Carry out the initiatives you have started. Okay. And as we, achieve, as we actively participate in this virtual webinar, may we inculcate the spirit of Bayanihan as we say, we educate as one and we heal as one. Mabuhay tayong lahat and magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Stay safe and healthy everyone. God bless us all. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kalagi, for that warm message. Truly, research is a vital component in nation building, as mentioned by RB. Uh, research activity is rigorous and quite challenging because the output of research is knowledge. And we want to ensure that we are producing quality, correct, and rightful knowledge to be utilized by our community for the upliftment of the lives of everyone and we assure our partner HAIs that Chad is with you in promoting quality research activity in your institution. So thank you very much uh, uh, once again Dr. Kalagi for that message. Uh, just an update as of the moment 
um, there are already 310 total uh, participants who registered uh, for our activity today. So thank you very much uh, once again. So keep um, inviting and sharing your uh, to to your uh, friends, to your colleagues, no our activity for today. So at this point, uh, may I call one of our education supervisors of Chad Caraga, Dr. Griseldo C. Kalinawan, for the introduction of our distinguished guest speaker. Sir. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Sir Ted. My respect to our regional director, Dr. Yurida Alagi, ma'am. To our distinguished virtual participants, my colleagues in Chet Garaga, a pleasant and sunny morning, everyone. It is a great honor and privilege to introduce to you our webinar resource speaker for today's topic entitled Strategy and Tactics, Moving Student Research Forward in the New Normal. Our speaker for today is tagged as the first Filipino scholar to hold a distinction as holder of five doctoral degrees, namely Education, Management, Human Resource Management, and Instructional System and Organization Development. He is a regular member of the National Research Council of the Philippines Division of Social Sciences. A finalist of Metrobank Search for Outstanding Teacher, he has conducted trainings and conferences in the Philippines and 20 other countries. He was Dean of the Fad of Father Saturnino Orius University and Vice President and Director of Research at Liceo de Cagayan University. He has managed journals which were accredited by the Commission on Higher Education and indexed by Thomson Reuters, Sidney Scale, ProQuest, Edscohost, and the Philippine Electronic Journal. He is a visiting professor of public and private universities. He is a published and cited author. He is the first entrepreneur who successfully organized conferences in Asia and the Pacific, serving clients in over 50 countries. With no much further, much, with no much further ado, please help me welcome Dr. Inaro V. Hapos. Morning, Paul. Hello! Magandang umaga, Pilipinas. Magandang umaga, Ched Caraga. And my morning greetings go to Dr. Yunida Kalagi, our beloved director, who is at the forefront of reinventing the architectural landscape for research in the region, particularly in northeastern Mindanao. And thank you also to... Um, that's the the officers and staff part of Jed Caraga, particularly Dr. Criselda Kalinawan, who I was able to work before in her in his stint as research director of St. Michael College of Caraga. And I'm very much deeply honored today because I know that we are being heard and watched all over the country. Mula sa bahagi ng Northern Luzon hanggang sa Southern Philippines. And that is very good. And the wonder of technology uh, is allowing us through uh, streaming in Facebook so that many people will be able to know. At the outset, I would like to tell you that my success today um, hinges on the following things. One is that that I will be able to convince you about an opportunity to change some mindsets about the way we do things so that we will be able to embrace change. And secondly, that you can do what I tell you to do because the only way to learn is to do what you know because learning is not just you know mental but cellular so here we go I believe in the statement of uh, Stephen Covey which says begin with the end in mind so the reason why we are here today is because we would like to take a look at how we can implement the uh, mandate of chat with the CMO 15 series of 2019. All right. 
So with that, mas mabuti na tingnan natin kung ano ang ano ang magiging out, outcome ng thesis, papaano siya ma-redesign from the classical chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is called Germanic. Yun po yung Germanic na style sa pagsulat ng thesis and dissertation, which has not changed in the last 100 years. So, if your school is a bit dated already, okay, if you see, if you pull out a study conducted in 1950, 1980, 2000, 2010, you will see that the same chapters have been have, have been retained and the same parts per chapter have been retained and there is hardly any innovation in thesis writing. Uh, the drawback for this kind of uh, style is that when the student is able to finish from chapters 1 to 5, he still needs to extract certain elements in the thesis in order to be written as a publishable paper and to be submitted to journals. Kung baga maging madalawa na ang trabaho, uh, gawin mo na yung thesis and after that, gawin yung publishable paper. And then, what happens is that kung hindi siya magiging institutional graduate policy na dapat ma-produce yung, yung publishable paper, what happens is that uh, nandudoon ang thesis sa office ng dean who will translate that or transform that into a publishable paper. Wala. That is why many of the studies lay, are lay, laid to waste because of this method. So, I understand that uh, classical pa rin ang ating style sa paggawa ng thesis. That is why I would like to propose na um, during the proposal, kung mag-submit ang insurgente ng chapters 1 and 2 or chapters 1 to 3 depending on the style of the school, dapat dalawang versions ang kanyang isubmit. Una, yung classical na proposal na from introduction up to the methodology, nakalagay pa yung bibliography hanggang sa curriculum VT and then naka-insert pa yung kanyang mga questionnaires. Yan, that is one format. The other one is a publishable paper hanggang sa methodology only plus the bibliography. So, dalawa na kaagad ang kagawin niya during the proposal para matingnan na ng panel kung um, ano ba ang merits nito. So, therefore, the panel will look at the classical Germanic study plus the publishable paper. And then, during the final the, the final paper presentation, yun ba mag-depend na siya sa completed manuscript, eh di yung, yung dalawang versions din ang dapat matingnan. Meaning, tapos na yung chapters 1 to 5 and then yung publishable paper hanggang sa 15 pages hanggang sa bibliography tapos na rin para ready na siya for publication that is one style the other style is that yung kanyang study will already be published in the various phases of the thesis writing procedure so anong ibig sabihin nito? okay, for example ha uh, we did this already and we will show to you later uh, how it looks like. All right, so, uh, di ba, prior to the completion of a proposal, kailangan matapos mo muna ang literature review. Alam naman, anong ilalagay mo doon sa mga theoretical framework, di ba, uh, kung wala kang literature review. So, basic na yun. Um, whether that is a separate chapter or integrated in chapter one, meron talagang research review requirement. Hindi matino ang study kung walang ganyan. And then, pag nanonood na yung research review, ishape na agad siya, okay, based on an institutional prescription of the style. Kasi isa sa mga bagay na nadiscovery ko in my developmental stages sa research is that um, generic na lang yung literature review na basta uh, nanonood ang marka doon ay review of related literature and studies iyon na yon hindi pala kailangan pala na may design for example uh, there is the, the generic research review that's another style the second one is the systematic review that's another style and then another one is the meta analysis another style kaya nga sa senior high at college okay na yung research review or literature review format sa masters maganda na systematic review na sa PhD pwede na systematic review plus meta-analysis or meta-analysis na para naman magkakaroon ng parabang hagdan 
na merong degree of you know complexity you know, as we go um, higher so therefore um, when when the student is able to uh, identify a topic and of course this topic will be um, approved already by the dean and the you know the research um, panel before siya payagan na gagawa ng ano ng ng further write up so pag na approve na yung title the next thing that he will do is complete a research review and then um, punta siya doon sa ano punta siya doon sa panel na ito na yung review ko so um, the first um, oral defense is actually the defense of the title and the second oral defense could be the defense of the research review article so naka-format na yung article pag sasabihin ng panel na okay na yan you have found your variables you found everything that you need okay na yan if submit na for publication wala pa siyang proposal defense nag-submit na siya ng kanyang RRL doon sa mga publication houses or journals so habang inaarangkada ang pre-review ng kanyang ano ng kanyang papel ang susunod naman niyang gagawin ay yung methodology and di ba isa sa mga aspeto doon sa methodology ay ang kanyang questionnaire right so gagawa na naman siya ng questionnaire and then paggawa niya ng questionnaire meron siyang procedure like for example ha kung uh, meet up uh, may metrics siya na ano na mga uh, likert scale 5481 or whatever is that and then dapat meron siyang kuan bakal pa di ba and then item total correlation and then after that magpunta siya one step higher hindi lang yung Cronbach Alpha lang, ah, di ba? Actually, what is that higher? Um, exploratory factor analysis. So, those items will have to be um, uh, computed for uh, exploratory factor analysis, at least at the minimum, or kung meron pang panahon, confirmatory factor analysis. Hindi e naging maganda na ang kanyang questionnaire, ipapublish na naman yan yung questionnaire lang. Because there is a publication format for a questionnaire. So, isabit na namin yung publication. So, umarangkada na ang pay-review na kanyang article. Kasi yun ang pang-scopus. Kasi art questionnaires that use exploratory and uh, confirmatory factor analysis ay sobra talaga mabango pagdating doon sa scopus at saka sa clarivate analytics. So, umarangkada na ang publication. Wala pang formal oral defense. Okay, ng proposal. So, pag nag-proposal na ang tao, AD, publish na kanyang RRL, publish na ang kanyang questionnaire, AD, ano na lang ang gagamitin ng panel? Di punti na lang ang kanyang tingnan. Right? Uh, so, mayroon ng dalawang publication ng tao, eh, wala pa siya nga siya nag-gather ng data. You can just imagine that one. And then, after that, siyempre, mayroon kang data collection procedure, tapos, pukuha ka ng mga data, and then ganun. And then, ito na yung tinatawag na publication of results. Okay, kung meron kang descriptive data, yun ba mga what is the level, what is the status, to what extent, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that is one publication, the descriptive analysis of the study. But then, meron ka pa namang another set of questions which are called inferential na meron siyang kakambal na hypothesis yung mga is there a significant difference is there a significant relationship okay which of these are predictors of what all right so ano bang uri ng ano ng model ang uh, what is the best fit model for this kind of variable those are empirical questions that require hypothesis and then yung resulta doon is another publication that's the fourth one uh, intended for your results no so may dalawa ka na kaagad ka, kanina, meron ka pang descriptive analysis, meron ka pang inferential analysis. What about kung meron ka pa rin mga tanong na kailangan ng mga qualitative na answers? Okay? So that is another publication. Yun yun yung panglima. Which is the, what we call as the um, qualitative part. Now, what about if you are using mixed methods? Di ba? Ang mixed methods design is actually three studies in one. So, meron kang, uh, kung magsimula ka sa quanti and then quali, ang tawag doon na sequential, explanatory, mixed methods design. And so, bakit three in one yun? Kasi magsimula ka sa quanti, from the quanti yun ang basis mo sa pagtanong, that is the quali, and after that, the, uh, ano, the uh, point of uh, convergence, so yung tatlo. And so, that is another publication. Uh, see, so ang dami. So therefore, 
the reason why we, we write thesis and dissertation is essentially to output into a publication that is the first level na dapat ma-publish ang material. So, meron ng lima. In all of these, meron tayong mga co-authors. Okay. For me, except the one that is about the RRL. Kasi pag ang RRL, di ba, hindi man kasama yung advisor sa paghanap ng mga materyales. Hindi man kasama ang advisor sa pagsulat niyan. So, ibigay na natin na solo authorship yan sa estudyante. Kasi ang RRL, estudyante talaga ang gumagawa niyan. Pero yung questionnaire, magawa ba yan kung walang magtulong sa kanyang statistician? Okay, so pwede siyang magiging ano, co-author, together sa estudyante, together sa advisor, kung silang tatlo, okay, fine. And then, pagdating doon sa results, alright, okay, um, pwede din na meron siyang mga co-authors doon. So, that, that is an example where uh, a teacher can have multiple publications even if he did not actually do any field work. Okay, because that is already um, a practice now because of the criteria for co-authorship. So, I'd like to mention to you, when can you be a co-author of a study? Okay, one is that you must have been involved in the conceptualization stage, like yung proposal. E, ano nga naman na hindi kasama ang advisor doon? Oh, ma ma mabahay mo ba? Di ba? Magawa mo ba yung design ng proposal kung walang input ng advisor? Hindi. Okay. So, pasa siya doon. Pangalawa is that, merong involvement ng advisor doon po sa analysis ng data and interpretation. Of course, meron siya doon. Okay. Third is that, meron siyang pirma doon sa paper prior to final publication. Meaning, kasama siya sa nag-approve. Kasi pag tatlo ang authors, tatlo dapat ang magfirma sa last sa last na version prior to uploading as, as a published article. Doon. Pangapat, meron siyang waiver na pirmahan. What the waiver says that um, the advisor is willing to face and be a part of post publication um, legal issues kung meron mang mga kabalbala na nangyari doon, mga malpractices ng paggawa ng study or mga false na claims <coughs> at <coughs> sakaling madimanda yung isodyante at mabilanggo, at least he will not be lonely there kasi kasama naman niya kanyang advisor. Diba? So, apat na reason. I think in all of this, the advisor is a part of the study. That's it. Okay, now, um, here's another catch. All right. Interview is a very important part in the research process. Yun bang yun bang magpunta ka sa stakeholders mo kasi walang study na matino na walang klarong stakeholders. So, ang pagpunta sa mga stakeholders usually sa kultura sa Pilipinas and even elsewhere outside of the country, magpunta ka lang doon sa mga tao at magtanong-tanong kung natapos na yung data mo and then i-validate mo lang yung data kung meron pa bang madagdag na interpretation ng yung mga stakeholders. Okay. Hindi naman yan mali, but that is not enough. Because there are four times that a researcher needs to face, okay, in an interview, whether uh, it's going to be in-depth interview ng grupo or it, it will be a focus group discussion, apat na beses. So the question is, what are these four times na siya ay magpunta dapat doon para magtanong at makipag-usap. Una is that, doon pa lang sa conceptualization ng title, malaman mo na kung sino ang iyong mga stakeholders. For example, if the study is about water crisis, kasi kulang yung tubig sa isang locality, hindi sino ba? O diba, dapat meron kang ano, local water, water utilities administration, meron kang water district, alright? Meron kang um, sanguni ang panglungsod dahil problema nila yung tubig mga batas, alright. Meron kang pari at uh, why? Kasi siya yung in charge ng mga parokyano, di ba? Mga, mga parishioners. And then meron kang mga NGOs. Meron kang mga, mga negosyo na gumagamit ng tubig at wala ng mga restaurants, mga dormitories, mga ganyan. And then mga isodyante, kung sino pa. Kausapin mo na sila. Questions like, um, uh, do you recognize na na-feel na, na, na mo ba na problema yung tubig? Oo. And then you, you ask them about how they are affected by the water crisis. Why is this important? Para you are send, you are standing on solid ground. Title pa lang, tapos na ang interview ng iyong mga publics. Okay. 
preliminary interview yun. Dahil, una mong itanong is, ano ang experience nila sa problem? <coughs> Pangalawa, how are they affected by the problem? Pangatlo, tingin nila, ano ang solusyon sa problema? Every person has, <coughs> has something to say about how the problem can be solved. Yun. So, imagine title, parang may solusyon na yung mga stakeholders. And then, ipakid mo yan siya as one distinct paragraph Okay, that will define the existence of the problem as corroborated <coughs> by various stakeholders for a while. Okay, as corroborated by various stakeholders. So, yun yung mga interviews number one. Ipangalawa naman dun sa method. So, sino ba ang mag-answer? Sino ba ang mga offices na in charge nito? <coughs> yung nagawa na proposal, yung nagawa na na ano ba tawag nito questionnaire o oh, dalhin mo doon sa ano sa sa mga stakeholders and then you say to them like for example um, when I go to the uh, water district ito po yung mga tanong namin okay uh, sa feeling mo ba na capture namin yung sitwasyon na dito ba kayo ano ba ang pwedeng madagdag ninyo sa questionnaire ay wala kayong oh, walang ganyan uh, um, may meron kami mga input so accept the input And then um, after that magfirma sila. And then yung mga yung ano yung yung konseho yung sangguniya pang sabihin nila, eh, dapat may malagay diyan yung implementation ng mga batas namin. <coughs> Kasi gumagawa na kami ng mga batas. And so okay, eh, dag, 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 dag. after that the final version of the instrument and then ibalik sa kanila. And then oh, okay na kami nito, paki-firma sir. Okay na kami nito, paki-firma. Bakit kailangan yan? Para hindi nila isuka kung ano yung magiging output ng yung data dahil <coughs> they approved the questionnaire already. Oh, Jesus. Alright, so, having said that, pangalawa, okay, pangatlo, oh, natapos mo na yung mga statistika. May mga tables nang nagawa. Alright, don't write yet the interpretation. Because one of the problems of research is that the researcher plays God. The data is in, are in front of him, tapos iisip lang siya, pagkatapos isulat na kanya na isip. O ano ka, nasasaniban ka ba ng espiritu na Einstein? No. Because in research, I believe that you cannot use what you know. Because what you know has no bibliography. You have, you have to ask people so that you will be able to acquire information so that you will know. Even if you can explain it yourself, don't attribute that to yourself. You have to get people who can talk similarly about what you know so that you can attribute the information from them. Okay, for example, dito po sa, ano, sa, sa um, table 3, alin ba dito yung rated highest, rated lowest? So, bakit ba ganito yung, ano, yung, yung data natin na masyadong mababa? Sa experience ba ninyo, ano ang nangyayari? And so, the, the stakeholders will begin to explain, ganito, ganito, ganito. And then you say, are you happy about this? No. So, what is the what is the picture that is opposite to this? Dapat na ganito. So, ano dapat ang mangyari? So, they will talk. And then you will get the insight. And then you factor them in, uh, factor those in, in the interpretation of the data. That is third step. O, natapos na yon, Okay. So, nalinis na from chapter 1 to chapter 4 or chapter 5. Yung last na magpunta ka sa kanila ay doon sa paggawa ng uh, tinatawag natin na recommendation. Kasi, isa sa problema, pinaka-problema talaga sa thesis and dissertation is the crafting of the recommendations. Dahil, ang researcher, pagkatapos sa conclusion, ano kayo mag- dapat mangyari dito? Dapat may training, dapat may palisiya, dapat may pagbabago, dapat ay implement ang ganito. Aba, sino ka para magsabi ng superintendent na gawin mo today? O, sino ka magsabi doon sa mga manager na ito yung gawin mo? No, wala kang karapatan. Okay, it doesn't mean that you are a thesis writer or dissertation writer and then you already have that, the, the expertise to prescribe. The answer is no. So, dapat, Punta ka doon sa stakeholders, okay? Ito yung lumabas ng data. Meron kayong mga suggestions noon. Ito na yung na-package ko. What do you think about this? Ano bang pwede niyong maidagdag? Kung ito ba mga recommendation na ito ay, ay ipasa sa inyo, gusto niyo bang gawin ito at kainin? Because this is the one that you believe 
and you are convinced na magsasolve ng problema at mag-improve ng buhay natin. Okay. So, therefore, participatory um, um, management is important here where the stakeholders will be engaged in a workshop. Kaya nga, mas maganda na kung sino yung mga stakeholder representatives, invite them para lutuin yung workshop na kasama sila sa problem identification and then um, uh, ano ang mga recommendations nito para ma-identify natin what do these people want that we that will be implemented because as a researcher you are not the implementer sila ang implementer okay let me give you an example sa, sa case ng ano ng isang teacher from TPET Uh, siyempre, taga-deplit siya. So, sino ba ang implementor sa kanyang mga proposals the division office? So, dapat yung mga supervisors na involved, assistant superintendent at saka HR will be included doon sa pag-uusap kung an- pa- paano natin maisalin sa recommendation ang mga findings na ito. And then, pagkatapos, so sabihin na, Ma'am, uh, isa sa mga recommendation ko nito ay ano, um, gagawa ng training about this particular topic lumabas siya sa mga sa aking mga stakeholders um, uh, uh, consultation and so you go to the HR office and then you ask the HR this ma'am uh, pa- pahingi ng sample ng inyong um, training proposal outline para yun ang kopyahin ko na ito yung paraan sa paggawa ng training proposal o ito Okay, you begin with the rational, tapos ganyan, ganyan. Ah, okay, uh, i-follow ba ito, ma'am? Pagkatapos, balik ka sa kanya, ma'am, ito na yung nagawa ko. Paki, paki-read and then paki-input. Okay, alright. Ito rin yung mga corrections ko. Alright, wala na akong corrections yan. Okay na ako dyan sa ginawa, ma'am. Pakitingin po sa calendar of activities for next year. Pwede ba ito na malagyan ng petsa? Kasi, ma'am, pag walang petsa ay wala talagang mangyayari. Sige, hanapan natin. Pak. O ito, August 14 to 15. Fine. Okay, ma'am, um, pwede ba na meron kang note mula sa, uh, sa office mo na endorsing me to the assistant um, superintendent para puntahan ko siya para maghingi ako ng opportunity na magkapagbigay siya ng um, division memorandum order implementing this on August 14 to 15. Okay, then punta doon sa superint- assistant superintendent. Siya man ang gagawa. Alright, and so, meron ng... Ano, meron ng Um, tawag nito um, um, deep and order mura sa division and so is that all? no, the answer is not, no kailangan muna na big, bago mangyari yung August 14 na 15 meron ka tinatawag na pilot run ng sampung tao and so you get 10 people who are similarly situated sa mga final participants ng training gawin mo yung training sa dalawang araw you get the speaker so that they will be able to experience it Kasi ang mga taong walang experience sa paggawa ng training, ang daming isaksak na mga topics hanggang sampo. In reality, you cannot do that. You can only have one or two trainings in the morning. Topics, dahil mayroon pang workshop, mayroon pang clinicking, mayroon pang reflection setting, insight drawing. So, ang dami pang dapat ma- matutunan. So, i-pilot run yun. And then after that, you ask the participants, how do you feel? Do you feel being rushed? Do, um, Do you feel that you are that you are able to develop your skills or ano ba? And then magbibigay sila ng, ng, ng input. And then after that, then you redesign or you revise and refine your training design. And then yun na yun ang ibalik mo sa sa HR na ma'am. I tested it. Kasama ka naman, inibita kita, ikaw ang nagbigay ng message, okay? Ito na yung resulta. Eh di na, naging mas maganda. So Uh, ibig sabihin dito, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you have three recommendations, for every recommendation, meron kang full strategy of implementation. Recommendation number two, the same. Recommendation number three, the same. So, pag, ina- pag, kailangan, uh, pag ang recommendation may dapat may local batas sa sangkuni ang panglungsod, eh di, mula sa noon pa, di isama mo na yung counselor who is in charge of that. Kasi lahat ng problema ng bansa, ay merong ano yan, meron siyang... Committee on Ways and Means, Committee on Infrastructure, Committee on Health and the Environment. May mga committees doon. Isama mo na siya doon sa pagtimpla so that siya yung end user. So, punta ka sa kanya, sir. Uh, pahingi ng kopya ng inyong resolution. Okay. Bigyan kang kopya ng resolution. So, your pattern, which aspects of your data need to be included in that resolution? Eh, kasi hindi naman scientist, hindi naman nag, ano, nag-PhD yung ano, yung... Yung counselor, may iba nga. Kung hindi na mamawaling kinang buto, hindi, siya, hindi sila mahirap dyan. 
So, kailangan ikaw ang mag-prasta doon. And then, after that, balik ka na. Pakiidik, sir. Okay. Dagdagan pa ng ganito kasi, kasi, kasi. Oh, that's fine, sir. Pwede ba na magpunta ako doon, magblabla ako ng mga 7 minutes pagkatapos, ito, i-endorsa mo siya on the first reading para ma-implement talaga. And then, sa deliberation ng second reading, punta din naman ako. And then, deliberation ng third reading, punta din naman ako para ma-prasta siya. Okay. So, which means na if your third recommendation is local policy, yun ang pagdadaanan na talagang yung, the counselor is involved, the counselor is the one who edits the, the proposed uh, resolution, and then the counselor is going to argue that and then have that be entered as you know, reading number one. Ganon. So, which means na wag kang gumawa ng mga, mga recommendations na ang dami-dami pagkatapos lista lang sa utang. Kasi yun talaga ang nangyayari na of all the people I have come across to and I have trained here in the Asia Pacific, I have asked you this question. Sino sa inyo magtaas ng kamay para magsabi sa akin na may isang recommendation sa thesis, sa dissertation ninyo na talagang na-implement? Ay talagang wala. Kasi sa simula pa lang, wala talaga. Mali na yung stroke. Okay? So, yun ang pinaka-importante. Alright. Now, natapos na yung mga recommendations mo. Okay, that's not enough. Kailangan ng popular advocacy sa research. Okay. So, ano ba ang DNA? Ano ba ang punot dulo ng anang ano ng popular advocacy ng ng research? That is like this. Kung ako ang dean of the graduate school and I think there are many of you who are dean of the graduate school and then ikaw ay estudyante, magpunta ka sa akin na ma'am, ako ay taga PNP, Philippine National Police. Ah, okay. So, alangan naman na ang study mo sa the market, natural is about the PNP, whatever aspect of that. Very good, you know. So, ang gagawin mo nito, bibigyan kita ng kopya ng pro forma ng MOA, Memorandum of Agreement. Because your head, your boss, will sign a MOA with me representing the graduate school, authorizing the conduct of a research on your part. Second, authorizing your access to data inside the office necessary for the study. And then third, that as PNP office, uh, as, as, as an office of the PNP, they will agree that they will have a hand in the approval of the recommendation and in the implementation of the recommendation. Dahil during the, the, the uh, proposal and final defense, invitahin ang iyong representantes of Lucina para marinig nila yung progress ng study. Alright? Proposal and finals, we will get a representative from them. And then, after that, I mabain na yung study, we will go back to them and then you are going to e explain to them what happened as a result and then you are going to give them a copy of the study na nakaribon pa. Okay. And then, yun na yung uh, pagbibigay ng, ng, ng resulta. And then, part of the MOA says that six months after, there will be a tracer study kung talaga bang na-implement nila ang iilang portions doon sa recommendation. At kung meron ng Initial na implementation, kukuha tayo ng mga initial documentation kung ano yung resulta. And then, six months after, meaning one year na, 12 months na, balikan sila kung ano ang kanilang final statement, kung meron bang magandang na kakahinatnan doon sa implementation, sa recommendation ng study mo. Tapos, kung meron man, kailangan mag-execute sila ng minimum of three to five minutes video testimony nasasabihin ng chief of police na hi, I am um, major so and so, I am the chief of police I would like to thank this university for for the opportunity for the memorandum of agreement ito na yung gains namin, ito na yung na-implement, ito na yung mga natamo, and these are the changes that are going on, ang ganda and then, with, with the video and the documentary reports na, ano, na hard copy, dalhin doon sa dean of the graduate school, gagawa siya ng award, either certificate plus the plaque. Kung meron mang plaque na kailangan doon gawin, no? Na, ang award na yon ay um, award for research utilization. Meaning, the research of the graduate school is being utilized by the end user. Which is the, for example, in this case, the PNP. Di ba? Ang ganda. Alright. Now, that's not just enough for, ano, for research advocacy. Kailangan na Ikaw na estudyante, natapos ka na mag-defend, na-publish na yung study, okay, magpunta ka doon sa radio station in the local area. So, if you come from Agusan del Sur, 
maghanap ka ng mga tatlong mga radio stations, punta ka doon, magsulat ka, and then merong firma ang din at saka advisor mo. So that when you arrive there, ang mangyayari doon is that you are going to be interviewed at least three basic questions. Kasi alam nga naman, isang oras ka doon, may mga drama pa sila, di ba? Ang dam- may mga commercials pa. Minimum na lang o five to ten minutes, okay na, fights na tayo. Ano lang yung tatlong questions? What is it that I wanted to discover? Second, what did I discover? Third, what can the society benefit from my discovery? Ito lang yung tatlo. And then, kung na-implement na, nagpunta ka na doon sa PNP, status ng implementation nito. Because, ang user ng research ay hindi panel. Ang, re- ang user ng research ay hindi din. Ang research ng, 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 ng research ay sambayan ng Pilipino. So, kailangan na, meron ka pang gagawin doon para i-articulate sa community. And please lang na, please lang, huwag ka mag-English-English dyan. Because when you go to the radio station, you are going to talk to the public, so you talk in the mother tongue. ba diba? kung, kung Tagalog doon, Tagalog. Pag manubo, manubo. Kung saan man yung, o ano man yung dominant na language doon, doon ka magsalita ng ganyan. Para walang hadlang doon sa pag, 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 ano, pag-interpret ng tao, anong ibig mong sabihin? Yun yung pinaka-import na doon. Okay. All right. And then, yung bang yung yung interview mo dapat may certificate na issued by the radio station. 'Yon. And then, gagawa ka din ng news report. Yung news na 'yon is a straight news of one paragraph only telling the community of listeners about what essential things did you find and what can happen to society when this can be implemented. Straight news 'yon. Kailangan na tataka na receive, tataka na aired on which time. And the, the news report can be in English. One one version is English, the other version is in the dialect. Okay. And then, ibigay mo sa din para doon sa outcomes-based education document and accreditation niya. Okay. Oh, di ang ganda-ganda. And then, is that enough? The answer is no. So, kailangan, uh, ano ba yung study mo? It's about water. And so, you go to Facebook. Di ba, meron kang Facebook? Kasi hindi ka tao pag wala kang Facebook. You are an alien. Di ba? Oh my God, saan ka bang planeta ay pinanganak? Bakit wala kang Facebook? Kaya, uh, when I was doing consulting work among the religious, maski mga madre at mga pare, sabi ko, kung gusto ninyo masave ang mga tao sa mundo, kailangan meron kang Facebook. Kaya doon magsimula. Kasi ang tao, minuto-minuto na sa Facebook, link, once a week lang siya magpunta sa simbahan. So, kailangan may Facebook ka sister. Di ba? Ganon. Okay. Why? Kailangan na meron kang topic What, what is that? Water crisis forum. Okay. So, you create a public forum on water crisis. And then, ikaw ang may-ari doon admin. Pagkatapos, administrator ka lang. And then, you, 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 you have that as, you know, as a public forum to talk about the water crisis. So, kung may mga batas, may mga ano na doon sa, ano, doon sa konseho, o i-post mo doon yung mga batas na yan. And then, kung may interview ka doon, kung pa- ano ba ang isip nila to solve the problem, yung mga video clips, ipasok mo doon. And then, kung may mga tanong, ipasa mo ang mga tanong sa kinaukulan para masagot nila. It becomes a forum. Because a research needs to have a life of its own. Eh, kasi, hindi na uso yung impartial fulfillment of the requirements of the degree. Pagkatapos mag-graduate ka, wala na. ba? Diba? Alam mo, ang mga taong gumagawa ng ganyang uri ng research, patay na sila. na covid na. Bah, huwag kang sumama. Okay. Masagwa yan. Hindi yan tama. Mali yan. So, kailangan na your research needs to have a life of its own. Independent of you. Matigo ka man anytime, the forum will continue. Ganon. And then, not only the Facebook. Eh, magpunta ka pa doon sa YouTube. Okay. So, sa aking mga estudyante, alam nila, i-require ko sila na gumawa sila ng YouTube channel. And then, YouTube channel dalawa, you can do a YouTube channel of your name and then YouTube channel of your course. So, pwede doon na water, uh, water Crisis Forum. Yun yung pangalan ng iyong YouTube channel. Yun ang yung blog. And so, doon mo unang i-upload ang mga interviews, mga 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 inputs, yung 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 oral defense presentation mo na naka-video, doon mo i-upload. Pagkatapos, i-share mo sa inyong mga timeline. Okay, para marinig at makita at ma-appreciate ng ibang tao. So, imagine from the YouTube to the Facebook and then doon sa timeline ako I have 5,000 um, uh, followers sa Facebook I have two accounts the other one is 3,500 I have 8,500 if every student does that ang dami-dami libo-libo yung makarinig doon sa no, doon sa vlog ko 
sa uh, uh, sa YouTube channel. So that is another forum, di ba? Kung yan ka ma Lord next week, di ba? Eh, mabubuhay yung YouTube channel mo as long as hindi mo siya isara. Kaya nga sabi ko, alam mo, sino lang ba ang mga taong may alam sa study mo sa buong paaralan? Advisor mo, sigurado. Although hindi naman lahat ng advisor ay diligent at bumabasa ng paper. Okay. Pero at least, presumably, uh, may alam siya. Okay. Ang dean, and then the other members of the panel, and then ikaw. Kung magkataon na kayong lahat ay magsakay ng ban at matulimbang yan siya at mamatay kayong lahat, who else knows about ang pinag-usapan? Wala na. Kaya nga, ang mga panelist, ang mga advisor, at ang dean, ang dami-dami nilang migraine. Nalalaso na sila sa nababasa nilang intelligence sa araw na ginawa ng Diyos. Okay. Why? Eh, kasi sila lang may alam. But beyond the four walls of the oral defense room, who else knows about this study? So, kung ganito man lang yung study, to hell with studies. Kung ganito lang. Okay? So, that is the whole point na I am I am giving you an opportunity na pang ganyan talaga. Okay. Now, what about sa, sa platform, sa format? Okay. Ang alam lang natin na version ng thesis is that dapat nakabound siya. Kung yan lang ang alam mo, now is the time that you need to learn more. Why? Because nobody reads that. The rats like that. But the people don't. Kailangan mo pang tutukan ng baril yung tao para basahin yung study. Nobody likes to read this. Yes. Kasi ang sama-sama pagbasa, puro data, puro table, wala namang sinasabi. So, kaya nga, na- nabobord tayo sa pagbabasa niyan. So, kailangan, the school will calibrate policies. What are these policies? One, that from the thesis, meron kang editing, na diba, double space yung thesis, single space, edit siya, i-adapt into a book publication na my cover and then my preface yung maganyan my int- my introduction and then yun lang chapter on the methodology mawala siya dahil i-explain mo lang siya in a paragraph as part of the chapter 1 of the book kasi wala namang libro na mayroong chapter 3 methodology di ba so hindi na yan, hindi na yan importante sa publication ng libro kasi ang libro is for general consumption to help with hypothesis sa mga tao doon sa publiko. So, i-adapt mo yung editing na pang-consumable siya. No? Uh, alam mo ba sa journalism, because I'm a teacher of journalism, na a news article or a newspaper to be worthy of public um, um, consumption should be understandable, understandable by a person with grade 4 level education. Yun. Okay, so, ano mangyari dito is that yung libro, yung thesis ba, will be adapted. Manifest na lang siya. Parang, parang ano, um, mas makapal pa sa ano, binahan doon sa simbahan. Okay. Pero nandudoon yung essence niya na hindi na siya technical masyado. Alright. And then, ano gawin? Ipa-design siya sa isang professional layout artist. And then, three copies dalhin doon sa National Library. Okay. Para ma-inter siya doon para makuha siya ng copyright plus, makakuha ka ng ISB, International Serial Book Number. So, meaning, kung ako ang graduate student, ako ang master's at PhD, pag graduate ko, eh, meron akong isang libro na authorship. And then, kung maganda naman yung study, or who knows kung alin ang maganda, alin ang hindi, okay, ipadala mo sa Amazon, di ba? Uh, ipasala, ipasala, ipadala mo sa Lambert Publishing House of Germany, kung ano ba yung mga publishing houses. And then, Um, i ano i i online itinda mo siya ng buong mundo. Siyaro naman sa 6 billion na tao na ginawa ng Dios, di ba? Kung sa 6 billion ang dami-daming kriminal, di ba? Ang dami-daming banal, ang dami-dami ding magbabasa. Okay. So there will always be people who will read that. So imagine if you are going to Google your name and then makita doon na meron kang may, meron kang libro na nagaling sa thesis mo na nandoon doon sa ano sa sa amazon.com. Ang ganda kaya. Yeah. So that during the graduation ceremony, usually ang mga graduation wala sa umaga, nasa afternoon. E sa umaga, nandudoon yung mga parents yun ng enthronement ceremony. Na yung lahat ng mga estudyante nandudoon at saka with their parents and then uh, tawag doon launching ng kanilang libro and launching ng kanilang journal. So yung mga articles nila na na-publish plus yung libro will be given a ritual ceremony where they can be um, uh, provided with, you know, the right um, social appreciation sa ginawa nila. Okay, yun. So, that means na magbabago ang ating mga policies such as bago ka makapag-file ng graduation 
ano application kailangan muna na meron kang i-comply like okay uh, na, meron na ba itong ISP at copyright mo sa National Library pangalawa okay nasaan makikita na ba sa Google Scholar yung iyong mga publication the answer is no kailangan mo muna ng iano i-publish yan para ka mapag-file ng graduation and then pagdating doon sa ano sa transcript niya di ba ilagay yung title ng thesis plus title ng libro na nasa National Library na mayroong ISBN at saka copyright okay plus yung publication yung bibliography ng publications niya ilagay lahat ang mga yan because they are more important than a grade of 75 for the algebra di ba so that pag na-extract na yung kaniyang TOR at mag-a-apply sa nang trabaho nang doon yung listahan ng kaniyang title ng thesis, title ng kaniyang libro, and then yung mga bibliography ng kaniyang mga articles na nabuti. So, yun. Alright. Can that be done? The answer is yes. I've done that. I have designed a system like that in the Middle East and I will show you in a short while. But I would like to, to stop for a moment dahil gusto kong marinig. I'm so excited about your reactions. Okay, pwede kayo mapadala ng bomba sa akin pag ayan ninyo ang mga ganito. All right? Because you know, this is a forum where we need to be shaken from the lethargy of our perceptions na ganito lang yung thesis. Basta ayaw ko ng ng mantra na in partial fulfillment of the requirements of the degree. Because that is the one that causes the decay of Philippine research. Okay. So at this point, I'd like our MC to do a ano a, a short open forum before I go to the next topic. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Hapos. No? So, uh, really, it was uh, very uh, fruitful, no? yung insights nyo that you shared um, in the first half no, of our session this morning. I know uh, the feeling uh, our participants also feels the same, that they enjoyed as well. No? Yung discussion nyo po is really... Uh, with the humor of Dr. Hapos, talagang learning is fun. And um, at this point, um, we are open no, for any reactions or perhaps questions with our uh, dynamic speaker from our participants. Um, so, so far, sir, uh, I can read no, some of the comments in our chat box dito po sa Zoom uh, a lot of uh, mga participants natin sabi nila this is really refreshing discussion from Dr. Hapos thank you and uh, one of our supervisor commented learning is indeed fun with you Dr. Hapos thank you so much um, we have also um, the deans no, from HEIs from De La Salle, uh, John Bosco, uh, sabi ni Dr. Mangubat. So inspiring, Dr. Hapos. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And yet, we are still in the first half pa of the morning session. No? So again, uh, we would like to invite, uh, encourage everyone, no, yung ating mga participants to invite pa yung ating mga colleagues in the HEIs to join us uh, in this uh, wonderful discussion with Dr. Hapos, no. Kanina we started around uh, in the in the Zoom account, nasa mga 210 or 230, and yet as we go on, your number of participants natin are increasing po, no. Uh, it's 277. We reach up to 288 uh, as we go uh, forward in this activity. Um, let me read. Uh, some of the reactions uh, yeah we have here from again uh, mga HEI presidents natin and uh, key personnel sabi nila one of my brilliant uh, professors Dr. Hapos thank you for sharing your great ideas and um, another from Ma'am Elvira Pasagi uh, very engaging in a way and inspiring and talk with Dr. Hapos. I'm looking forward to another webinar with him, although I don't personally know him. But uh, again, yung impression ni uh, Ma'am Pasagi is really uh, superb, no? Yung ating uh, discussion this morning. 
Uh, so far, wala namang uh, tanong, uh, Sir Jean. Uh, it's more on mga reactions lang. And uh, let me just continue reading po yung ating mga reactions from our participants. Uh, from Normi in Kabadbaran. Uh, this is a good opportunity to us hearing from the brilliant, brilliant mind of Dr. Hapos. Thank you so much, Dr. Hapos. No? Uh, another... Uh, Shared very wonderful topic gave me fresh insights for my student researches. Okay, and also from Sisyu uh, Kabadbaran, Sir John. Uh, hi, Dr. Hapus. Basindok na kay book na nahimo na pwede namo mabasa as a way of guide. Meron daw ba dok available na book authored by Dr. Hapus? Well, I good, but I have some materials. Okay. Um, 16 ako bas basin. I will be able to write a book. Okay. Um, so anyway, ganin, kanina may nagtanong, no? If uh, meron ba tayong mga materials for this, no? Yes, anyway, this, this, ano naman, uh, itong uh, uh, activity natin is uploaded no naka-record ito and uploaded in our face, uh, Facebook page ng Chad Caraga you can always go back uh, to this uh, activity you can always uh, view and uh, see our activities sa ating uh, Facebook page no so since fresh pa ito uh, most likely this will be nasa uh, very available pa uh, for this week at even uh, within this month, no. But most likely, if uh, you will look for this in the succeeding months, baka matabuna na, no. So, mas possible you can uh, view again, balik, uh, balik balik, no. Tanawon yung balik balik, and even you can share this uh, activity since uploaded naman ito in our uh, Facebook ng Chad Karaga. Um, another comment, uh, doc. Jean from SPUS Graduate School. Um, a comment niya, Doc, it, it, will, it will be better if the proposals of Dr. Hapos be integrated and be adopted by CHED as a matter of policy that Yay! can be integrated by the <laughs> HEIs in the conduct of research. Yes, I agree. I agree po. No? Yung, yung mga practical advice practical guide ni Dr. Hapos no is very insightful and very helpful especially for everyone na may ongoing activity okay um let me just go back um one of our supervisor queued me no na merong question from FSUU um Ah, okay, ito po. Uh, from Sir Mark from Urius University. Tanong niya, Doc Jean, is it possible po ba to have the oral defense for undergrad via uh, forum? Zoom? Uh, uh, or public forum? Public forum, yes po. Okay, uh, I would like to answer that because that was also asked to me in other parts of the country. Should we allow the public to see our our public defenses kasi sa CMO 15 sir 2019 requirement talaga ang public forum na presentation ng thesis mayroon akong caution dito okay una is that ayaw natin ipahiya ang ating mga sarili kasi the IQ of the research of a student reflects the scientific IQ of the university so what has been my best practice ganito ako na ako ang dean and then makatanggap ako ng final manuscript ready for calendar kung kailan siya mabigyan ng petsa. Okay, sasabihin ko na, i-raut muna natin ito sa panel. Okay, for example, as a dean, I would say, dear uh, moral defense panel, okay, uh, the, the the paper is now ready and please go over it page by page and list down all your objections and suggestions so that this can be dealt with by the advisor and by the researcher and his panel of consultants. Okay. And then, oh, like, mali itong ganyan. Kulang ka ng references. Isulat na nila yung mga gusto nila mangyayari. Tapos, ibigay nila doon sa advisor at saka sa 
ano, sa din. Tapos sa din will convey that. Sabi na din na, oh, pandayin mo yan lahat. Pagkatapos, ikatalog mo yung mga sinasabi nila per panel. Pagkatapos, i-comply mo muna. Majority of those. Hindi naman po kung pwede. Siguro may mga opportunity na hindi pwede lahat. And then after that, balik ka. You create a new file. And then in the new file, uh, is this file ready for public oral defense? Okay, meaning the structural, the formatting, and all those uh, errors, wala na, nalinis na siya. And then, sinasabi na, yes. Okay, therefore, pag sinasabi na yes, okay, hindi na automa, bigyan ka ng kalendar, pero sabi na, oh, oh, John, okay, ang petsa mo is two weeks from now. Before that, kailangan may rehearsal ka. Kailangan na gumamit ka ng virtual background sa ating office. para hindi ka pwede ma-present sa Zoom na may mga labada, may mga underwear doon sa likod mo. So, kailangan talaga na may, may, may design tayo na virtual background so that when you do this, okay, kailangan na meron kang test case. Present your paper to another group muna. Tapos may mga interactions doon. And then when you feel like comfortable, okay, kailangan na by the time na mag-oral defense ka, tapos ka na doon. So that the public can now make use of that. So, ang ginawa ko doon, since I have advisors in the mid advices in the middle is like Dr. Jeff Pigoy, he was my student before mga so few months back. I posted the oral defense in the web doon sa aking Facebook account. And so may mga taga India, may taga Indonesia, mga contacts ko nag-attend sila in order to listen to this public presentation. So, uh, meron mga taga ano, taga taga SGIT, meron ding taga Cebu Normal University. Okay, kasi nakita naman nila yung aking post. And that is good because you are prepared. Kasi kailangan ng rehearsal, kailangan ng muscle memory ang ating presentation. And then, yun na. So, meaning to say na wag mo nang uh, wag mo nang bumbahin yung study kasi nga na-clear na. So, the focus of the, of the public oral defense will be more on now that na, now that these are the data, how better can society you know, take care of it? Hindi yung mali, yung, yung, ano, yung sample size, yung sample size is mali. Yeah, you know, these are fundamental issues that should not anymore be thrown to the public. So, parang ganun. Okay. And then, kung pwede sana na yung panel na mag, ano, mag, mag-atupag sa kanya, eh, nakatuga sila. Kasi, I studied before at the Royal Pontifical Catholic University of Santo Tomas. Those who graduated from USD sometime in 1980 to mga 2000. Yung panel talaga ay, ano, at saka yung studyante, magtuga sila habang ginagawa yung oral defense. Okay, so, which means na, We are ready for the public. Okay. Uh, that, you're on support. Yeah, that, so, that's also a good point no? to really preserve din po oh. yung motivation and uh, self-esteem of the research student kasi sometimes baka magiging traumatic din oh. and baka negative na yung kanyang impression towards research. no? So, good uh, advice din yun from... Then, um, I, I, I then to that is that dapat alam ng panel bakit siya na Because the image for me, the the imagery for a panelist is that uh, you are in an ICU room. Tapos nakalatag doon yung pasyente, yun yung mag-defend. Tapos tayo ay mga doktor, making sure that our expertise as medical doctors will save the patient. Hindi yung maplano tayo na paano ba natin iturok ito na para mamatay na ng taong to. Diba? So that wala na tayong kabaho bukas, i-deadball na lang natin. Hindi ganyan. Because the role of a panel is nourishing. Nourishing is, is meant that he will use his expertise in order to make the study better. And it's not to, you know, to slay it. Kasi, when you slay it, alam mo, pag nabagsak yung sudyanti, ibig sabihin doon that mali yung curriculum. Hindi nagturo ng research-based instruction. Mali ang pagkaturo sa research. Mali ang pagkaturo sa statistics. Hindi qualified yung advisor. Hindi qualified yung panel. Ergo, yun nga ang dahilan. na matay yung study. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you po, Sir Jean. Siguro, follow-up lang, Sir Jean, no? If, um, ba- ba- meron bang difference in terms of the approach in- sa oral defense if it's a graduate uh, student or graduate? Kasi undergrad yung kanina na tinanong. If it's a graduate student, Sir Jean, na mag-oral defense, um, is it uh, parang more acceptable na ba yung ating uh, public uh, forum na defense or same lang po? Okay. Uh, ito lang yung sasabihin ko which is very important that everybody must learn. That, that This could be your takeaway. The stand, isa lang ang standard of research. And that is the internationally acceptable standard. 
hindi pwede siyang i-water down because ay high school lang yan, 30 na pirasong respondent, pwede na. Eh, gawin natin 50 kasi college siya, gawin natin 50 dahil master siya, gawin natin 500 kasi PhD. O, dapat walang ganun. Alright. So, let me give you the case in point of the St. Michael College of Caraga. Okay? So, ang nangyari doon is that ang kanilang high school student, yung senior high, ang kanilang trabaho are found in the web. Searchable in Harvard University Library doon sa Harvard Holies. Senior high yun, ha? And then, doon sa study nila, high school pa, ang sample nila 300, 200, kasi kung ano talaga yung population, doon ibase yung count ng sample size. Kailangan tama. And then, um, immediate pagkatapos ng oral defense, pupunta sila sa radio station kasi ang paaralan naman sa radio station. Meron silang 5 to 10 minute interview per student. So lahat ng estudyante sa senior high at college, nagdaan sila doon sa radio station na guest sila sa, ano, sa announcer para ma- marinig ng buong kapuluan ano yung pinag-iisip nila. So and then after that, nagkakaroon ng, ano, ng um, research conference within the school and then just last week, nagkakaroon sila ng international conference where the outputs of the teachers plus the output of the um, global community uh, were shown to the local community. Just stream yard pa sila. Okay. And then um, what we agreed in our meeting yesterday with Dr. Beverly um, Haminal is that next year, dapat meron, meron ng uh, international conference for senior high, international conference for college, uh, studies and then doon sa professional researchers kasi wala namang gastos anong gastos mo kurenti lang di ba okay so kung wala na then I will proceed to the next okay uh, yun lang na po naman po uh, Sir G no? most of our participants uh, agreed with you no? sabi ni Ma Maria Lelani sabi niya will set and sinabi ni Dr. Mapos uh, uh, yung, yung panel defense must know their role while, while, while they are there, no? uh, which is supposedly to motivate the, the researcher no? para patuloy niyang uh, makandak yung kanya research and to conduct uh, further future researches. Yeah. Okay. Because so, research yes, is easy. If you find research difficult, there are only two reasons. One, hindi ka naturuan ng maayos sa paralan mo. Kaya nga nahirapan ka. Pangalawa, may diferensya ka sa pag-iisip at ang Panginoon na ang may, ar- may arunda sa iyo doon. Dalawa lang naman ang possibility doon. Because the antidote for difficulty is competent instruction. Ay, ikaw naman, sumakum laudi ka sa uri. Diba, alam mo yun. Na, kung maganda pagkaturo, ergo, magtatap yung sudyante. Okay, sige. <laughs> okay, so let me proceed at this point in time. I will show you a sample of a thesis that I will give to you. Lahat kayo. I can even post it here sa sa ano sa ating Zoom so that ma-access ninyo. Okay. Um, I'll give you a finished product para hindi mo masasabi na ah, naglamlam lamang na sinaro. I will show you that it can be done. Okay, like this one. Uh, ito yung tapos na na dissertation, determinants of career change of overseas Filipinos. Don't worry, we will not discuss every chapter. I will just show you the salient points. Okay. Now, let me take a look at the approval sheet. Okay. Now, if you can look at your screen now in the approval sheet, meron tayong Muhammad Kashif, um, PhD guest panelist. Okay. Why? Hindi pwede na ang oral defense panel, lahat ay teacher. Okay. So, ibig sabihin doon, um, dapat 60-40. Okay, meaning sa lima na panel, tatlo ang nandoon sa paralan, dalawa yung outsider. Pag sinasabi na outsider kung masters yon, one should be a Filipino scholar outside of the university and the other one outside of the country. Yon. So this is a, a a leading academic from Pakistan, si Muhammad Kashif. Okay. Magkano ang kanyang ang binayad sa kanya, sa kanya? Kung ano lang yung ano, um, ano lang yung binigay din namin sa iba, yun ang ginawa namin sa kanya. Okay? Kasi hindi naman pera ang dahilan na inibita yung tao, kundi na magbigay din siya ng kanyang culture. Kasi ganito, tayo ang nagturo, tayo ang nag-advise, tayo ang nag-edit, tayo pa rin ang mag-hear. Ano tayo? O di ba? So Pinoy 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 equals balot, di ba? So kailangan naman na meron tayong ano, meron tayong um, sigla, meron tayong tinatawag na um, uh, cross-pollination. So, pag nag-invite ka, like, um, 
there was one na uh, inibita namin from the National University of Singapore. Okay, sabi nila, um, w- 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 will we measure up to the University of Singapore? So, uh, why not? Okay, he's a friend of mine. I got him as a, a lecturer. I got him as a keynote speaker. Ang ganda-ganda ng tao. So, sinabi ko sa kanya na, uh, kilala mo naman ang Pilipinas. So, we are inviting you not to make us feel that we do not know, but to, to make us realize what better things can we do so that we can do better research in this country. Na pumayag ba siya? Di ba? Hindi man siya nagsabi na bayaran niya ako ng libo-libo. No, no, no. no. Di ba? Okay. So, that's one. So, cross-pollination mismo sa panel. Okay. Then after that, ipakita ko sa inyo yung uh, mga perma ng mga eksperto. Okay. Example, ganito. Uh, kailangan na uh, mag-undergo siya ng uh, uh, sa Uh, yung bang ano yung bang pirma nila sa um, statistics okay more, more okay certification ito na alright certification um sino ang nagpirma nito IV Corazon mga ya ay doctor of philosophy in statistics siya ay teacher sa Bohol Island State University invited to give a judgment there. So, kay, uh, kasi ang legal na statistician ay yung talagang may master's at saka PhD. Kung wala ang paaralan na ganyan, maghanap ka ng tao para magbigay ng certification na yung nangyari ay tama. So, this is a certified that the study, okay, ito mga multiple regression, factor analysis ay tama. Okay. Suppose if I am a PhD in linguistics, marunong ako na train ako, nag-attend ako sa parso. Okay. Does that make me an expert? No. I can only process data. I can give input. Pero hindi ako pwede mag-certify kasi hindi nga ako PhD. Kaya nga, do you notice na pag nagpunta ka sa hospital, magpatest ka sa dugo mo, hindi pwede mag-release ng report ng, ano, ng medtech kung walang pathologist na doktor. Buhay man siya o patay, kailangan mayroon nakalista dyan na pathologist dahil on the merit na iyan ay isa lang ano is, is, isang medtech hindi valid yung resulta ng mga test sa laboratory okay so wala man doon sa so Middle East so kumuha kami kay IV so meaning meaning cleared na yung statistics so, ano pang ipagdaldal mo diyan sa statistika o ano o, labaw ka ba sa PhD ng statistics okay mangurihi ka pa ba sa kanya o ganyan then after that para sigurado tayo na walang palpak Then after that, is another one. What is this? Ethics protocol. Certificate of completion of research ethics protocol. Kasi dalawang uri ang certificate sa ethics review. One is um, cert, um, uh, approval to collect data at the moment of the proposal. And the other one is certificate of completion at the moment of the final oral defense. Ibig sabihin, yung na-approve na ethics protocol mo ay sinunod mo talaga, kaya nga, bigyan ka ng certificate of completion. Ito na yon. And so, kung panilis ka, wag ka na magdakdak doon sa mga ethics na yan kasi nga, meron ng ethics protocol. Labaw ka ba sa kanila? O, o, o diba? Nakainom ka ba ng mindita ng isang galon at mangurihi ka pa? O, diba? Okay, next. All right. Smile naman kayo. <laughs> Kasi ang mga tao na uh, nakalimutang tumawa, patay na. Okay. All right. Yan. What is this? Summary of quality assurance test. Okay. Meaning, uh, uh, ito, grammarly, uh, pangalawa, ano to, plagiarism, at saka similarity. Ito yung mga chapters. Okay. My standard, grammarly 90, and then plagiarism is 10 or less. Dapat, And then, ang similarity is 15% or less. So, na makita mo dito na sila ay pumasa. The question is, totoo ba ito? Naka-attach ang mga test results. I will show that to you later. Para maniwala kayo na talagang totoo na may test na mangyayari. Okay. So, therefore, hindi ka na mag-ama-ama na the paper needs competent editing. Anong editing na pinagsasabi-sabi mo? 95 na nga yung Grammarly. Bakit? Labaw ka pa ba sa makina? Okay. And then, next. All right. All right. So, <laughs> after this, we will go to the table of contents. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Para makita natin na nagbabago ng istruktura ng research. Ito ay dissertation writing by Imrad Publication. Hindi ito, opposite ito sa 
Germanic na chapters 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, ito yung chapter 1. Normal lang naman to. Chapter 1. Okay, can you scroll down? Alright. And then, nakita mo na, the last part nitong chapter 1 ay list of references. Kasi, in this method, bawat chapter, may mga citations of authors, mayroon na yung list of references kagad. And then, chapter 2, nandito na ang paper presentation. Meaning, ang chapter 2, wala nang method. Under this method by Imran Publication, nawala na yung method dahil the method is subsumed in every article that is published. Kasi wala na mga article, maski para RRL yan, mayroon talagang method. So, yung method is subsumed there already. Okay. Pero during the proposal, of course, normal. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3. Normal yun. Pagdating na doon sa final na, mawala na yung methodology. Mawala na yung ano, um, Chapter 2 na literature because it is already part of the publishable paper. So, Paper 1, Correlates of career change or result ng study. Paper 2. Determinants of career change. Mag gumamit ng regression. Okay. Uh, yun. Uh, result ito. Paper 3. Determinants of career change a literature review. Na-publish ang kanyang literature. Chapter 4. Uh, paper 4. Exploratory factor and confirmatory factor analysis of the career change scale. Yung questionnaire na-publish na. AD. Itong apat na to, ay ina-publish na siya, ay nandito na to. Okay. And then, when we go to the chapter 3, it is already a summary sa mga pangyayari. General summary, yun na. Then, all, all of that is supplemental data. But before this, I would like to show you na before the table of contents, narito na ang listahan ng mga publications. Okay. Here. List of publications. Okay. Publications from dissertation articles. Paper 1, nandito na ang mga, ang mga authors at saka something like that. And then, bibliography na ito. Published na siya online. Paper 2, Paper 3, Paper 4. So, wala pang oral defense. Tapos na ang publication sa Scopus. Dalawa itong Scopus. Uh, walang problema sa kanila kasi nga... Um, uh, nagtabaho sa Middle East so they can pay. Sabi ko sa kanila, wag ka magtipid. Magbayad ka ng publication kasi doktor ka sa ano. Diba? Oh, doktor ka dahil na-publish ka. Kasi pag hindi ka na-publish, ewan ko, karang title sa'yo. Okay. So, that's it. So, paper 1, 2, 3 na-publish. And then after that, list of paper presentations. Okay, here, makita mo talaga dito, no? Look at this. Um... Paper 1, ito yung conference. Paper 2, ito yung conference. Paper 3, ito yung conference. Paper 4, ito yung conference. So, saan conference ba ang bawat paper mo ito na i-present? So, this person presented for, uh, no, I think, three or four times. Okay. Alright. So, after that, I'd like to show you the um, sample of um, chapter 2, paper 1. Sample lang. Mukha lang ito ipakita na uh, ito pala. You can download that right now in your in your Zoom. No problem. Okay. So, yung paper 1, makita mo siya na mayroon siyang title. Okay. And then, my authorship. Pagkatapos, my abstract. My keywords. And then, it is actually a full paper. The published version. Alright. So, imagine that one. And then... Paper 2, ganun din. Paper 3, ganun. So, meaning, this is the published version. Now, the question is, bakit kinakailangang ma-publish prior to the oral defense? Di ba dapat publication sana after the oral defense? No, 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 no. Mali yan. Why? Ganito. Pag i-publish natin after the oral defense, sino lang ba ang tumingin ng papel? Yung limang tao na panel at saka isang advisor at isang tao na tumulat. Okay. So, only they are involved in quality assurance under that process. But in the method I'm presenting to you, diba, ilan ang papel na na-publish? Apat. Okay. Take a look at this. Bawat isang papel ay na-present sa international conference with a minimum of three to five judges in every venue. So, granting na lang na tatlo yung judges, ang pinaka-normal na yan, na tatlo. Kasi competition ang mga ano, racist presentations, diba? So, three people times four, 12 the mga PhDs around the world were already pouncing on him in the method, in the results, in the conclusion. So, binigyan na siya ng input. 
Okay, so para ma-improve yung study prior to the final publication. O, yun. Yun, ha? Presentation pa lang, 12 na na tao ang nag-review ng papel niya. What about pag-publish? Pag-publish, meron tayong 3 reviewers per paper. Times 4, 12 reviewers around the world have already been checking on the manuscript. Okay, plus, there are 5 editorial board members minimum in every journal. And they will read every volume. And so, 5 editor editors times 4, 20. So, 20 editors around the world, 12 peer reviewers around the world for the publication, and then uh, 12 judges around the world for the paper presentation. So, ano na yun? Um, diba? So, that would mean 20 plus 24, 44 people have already checked the paper. Plus, meron pa mga consultants. Kasi, a good research is just as good as a consultant. Okay. Uh, yun bang, kung wala kang consultant sa research mo, para kang tao na may sakit that is um, just doing what we call a self-medication. Uh, parang meron akong lagnat. So, ano ba mga tambal ng mga medisina sa lagnat? Okay. Bigyan mo ko ng sampo. Okay. Sampo, bawat isa. O, di, uh, tutumarin ko yung 100. Di ba? Kung hindi man ako magamot ng tama, di patay. O, That is equivalent to self-medication. But if you go to the doctor, you know, may mga may mga external na mga expert magtingin sa you, then it is better. So which means na ito yung mga experts na kailangan mo. Sampo lah, sampo lang. Kung quantitative at qualitative yung study, like mixed methods, kailangan na you have to identify anong uring quali. Kagawa ka ng quali phenomenology. You get an expert on phenomenology who have published in that particular method and then that will be your coach in the proposal hanggang sa final and then mag-certify siya na on the basis of my expertise I am able to ascertain that in the proposal and in the final the, the, the tenets and procedure for phenomenology were completely followed. Pirma siya. Eh di, di ba nakasandal sa pader kasi ang method. Okay. Pangalawa, meron kang structural equation modeling doon. Kumuha ka ng tao na nag-publish, nagturo, marunong mag-compute, ti- siyang tumingin sa proposal, at saka sa final, certificate na naman na yung ACA mo ay tama. And then, meron ka na naman mga regression analysis. So, ito ang tawag na mga method expert. Yun, magpirma din sila. And then, yung ethics committee, magpirma din. Question, eh wala mang ethics sa amin, wala mang problema. Kasi at the time that this paper was made, wala mang ethics committee doon sa Middle East. So, ang ginawa ko doon, pinadala ko ang kanyang libro, ang kanyang proposal, at saka final copy sa University of Bohol. Because the University of Bohol Ethics Committee okay, is accredited by the Philippine Health, um, Eti- Health Research Ethics Board. So, ang gagawin mo doon is that you just Google, and then pag-Google mo doon, di ba, um, ac- list of accredited research ethics committees Philippines. Bigyan ka ng lista, hanapin mo kung alin doon yung parang kampante ka na kaibigan mo no, para madali na yun yung pag, ano, pag, pag-approach sa kanila. So, I have people in the Middle East and then they face the panel of you know, ethics um, reviewers in University of Bohol and then they were given a certification from the start. Okay. And then later on, so final na, may ginawa na kami doon. So, kayo na nga yung si Dr. Acosta, yun na yung nagkirma. Pero doon po sa, 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 sa Primero Taga University of Bohol. ba? Diba? It does not mean na kung wala kang ethics committee, ay wala ka na lang ethics clearance, hindi pwede. Because the moment you submit your paper for oral defense doon sa ano, presentation sa Singapore, hanapan ka ng ethics. The moment na mag-publish ka doon sa Singapore o sa, 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 sa Scopus, hanapan ka ng ethics clearance. Do not be held a host stage to your school na wala. Because outside of the school, meron. And so, you just have to think about that. Diba? Magkano lamang bayad doon? 3,000. O, di ba? Magkano lang ba yung 3,000? O, di ba? So, we are, you are able to, you know, to, to comply that. O, yun. Pagkatapos, yung, yung study mo ay may public policy component. Okay. Meron ka nga proposal for policy. O, di, kumuha ka ng mga, mga, mga tao na doctor of public administration na meron din silang legislative experience. Okay. And then, sila yung magre-review ng study pagkatapos bigyan ng ano. Meaning, every part of the study ay may kanya-kanyang eksperto para magbigay ng certificate. The question is, can you afford? Of course. Pwede nga walang bayad. Sabihin mo lang na, ako ay matalino. Bata pa ako. I am 30 years old. 
I will be retiring at the age of 60. So I still have 30 more years to serve the country. Well, invest in me. Wala kang ikabayad sa'yo. But the moment that I graduate, and then meron mga taong katulad ko rin na walang pira, then I will serve them for free. Gato naman. Ako, I can serve for free. Bakit? Mamamatay ba tayo pag hindi mababayaran? Di ba? Kasi naman sa buhay, you know, I have to be honest with you. Some of the time, we should be paid adequately. I mean, equal, uh, meaning, um, equal, equal work, ano, um, equal work with equal pay. The balance is zero. Some of the times, uh, we will be paid more than what we expect. Okay. Some of the times, we will be paid less than what we expect. Some of the time, we should not anymore be paid. Because I would caution you, di ba? Huwag kang mamatay muna kung hindi ka pa nagsilbi ng libre. Kasi pag namatay ka, nahawala ka na libre na hindi binibigay lahat naman ng oras mo ay bininta sa imperno ka talaga puntahin. Kasi pag malangit ka, hindi na ako maniniwala sa relihiyon. Anong uri kang tao? Kaya sabi ko sa kanila, kung ikaw ay madoktor, di ba? O, oh, madoktor, kailangan na puntahan mo yung elementary school, yung high school mo na pinagmulan, yung college mo na pinagmulan. Pagkatapos, find ways, how can I serve this people? Hindi ka magiging doktor kung hindi ka na kinder doon. Di ba? So, and then, do not, do not charge for that purpose. Okay. Uh, so, what I'm saying to you is that sa experience ko sa world community, I was able to get keynote speakers, I was able to get, you know, um, judges. Yung mga judges ng conference ko, pro, pro bono lang yun. Magkano lang ba yung binigay ng, ng, ng tao na registration? Oh, ikaw pa doon, babayag ka pa ng judges? Hindi, hindi. Okay. So, that's it. Libre. So, which means, therefore, that the strength of the quality assurance of your research depends largely on the external set of, 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 of experts helping on the paper. And not only that, meron akong ituro sa inyo ngayon na tinatawag natin na author intimacy. Ano ba itong author intimacy? Okay. Kung ako ay researcher and I have 100 references, walang reference na walang author. Tama. At walang author na walang email. Kasi ang isang article na walang email na corresponding, ano yan siya? Uh, hindi siya legit. So dapat merong corresponding author. Pag lima kayo, at least may isa na merong email talaga. Sulatan mo siya, and then three things. One, tell him how much you like the paper. Thank you for your article entitled so and so because it is very useful to my current research. Pangalawa, as soon as I am able to do my part of writing the proposal and the final paper, I wish to show it to you so that you will be able to check that how I cited you in the paper okay, will be true to what you think I should be able to understand you. Diba? Whether I got you right because I'm citing you in my paper. And then third is that uh, if there can be a, um, an exchange of ideas on why uh, the, my results are similar or or dissimilar as yours in another country, in another environment, it will be a healthy exercise. Okay, very respectfully yours. Tapos yun. Hindi, sino ba namang ayaw ng ganong uri? Then aking mga sudyante sabi nila, Sir, hindi naman sila magre-reply kasi yung mga tao na yan, ayaw, UP, Ateneo, Lasal, nako, mga elitista yan sila. Tsaka mga Harvard, mga Oxford, no, 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 no way. Wala silang panahon sa mga katulad ko. Bakit? Diba? Makasalanan ka sila. Walang kasalanan. Pareho kayo. Diba? Pangalawa, pag nangutot ang mga yan, mabango? Hindi ah. So, wala tayong... Uh, meaning, do not cancel yourself out. Kung ako ay taga Harvard, tapos somebody is writing me from a far away country, I've never been to like the Philippines, I will be so honored that somebody is asking me about what I wrote. That is part of human nature na gusto tayo na kung ang ating trabaho ay pain, may isdang kakadat. Okay. And so, you write each one of them. And then, you send your proposal to them. And then, let them check your proposal. And then, the proposal, should, the proposal will be returned with a lot of checks, you know, from all over the world. And then, you revise from there. Do not depend on your research panel. Okay. Because your research panel have their expertise. But their expertise usually is honed by their own university. So, you must, up, you must supplement what they know. Yon, ganda. Diba? That's another one. Ipadala doon. Okay, that's it. All right. So, after this, I'd like to show you yung ating mga um, attachments. So, 
Um, pwede hilain mo lang siya papunta doon sa baba sa attachment niya. Kasi masyado siyang mahaba. Okay. Hilain mo na lang siya. Baba. Yes. I, I, I will go directly to the attachment para makita ninyo na, ah, yung journal pala ay Q4, yung journal is Q3. Nang, no. Alright. So, before pa. Uh, okay. Um, b- before pa sa technique. Okay, example. This is the Trinitian report. And then, yung mga K-Text report, yung mga Grammarly report, ganito din. Alright, ganyan. Oh, may mga report talaga siya. At yung mga numero nito, yun yung nakita nyo na summary at the beginning. Alright. And then after that, uh, then uh, after this report, we go to the portion where um, you have this, so Appendix 29. Can you see that on screen, ladies and gentlemen? Okay, for example, confirmation of publication for paper 3. Okay, so kung saan ka nag-publish, di ba, may confirmation sa publication, okay, isama mo do, dito sa attachment, whatever journal if it is. Okay, the next one, confirmation publication for paper 3. Ano, meaning, nandun na siya sa online, sa Google Scholar. Then after that, okay, peer review. Alright, so, if you can see on screen, nanito ang peer review. Alright, now, let me put it this way. Ah, yun pong, yun bang rating scale to evaluate the paper during the oral defense? Okay, dapat dalawa. Meaning, there is a rating scale for the full thesis. Okay, and a rating scale for the publication part. Okay, if, if you are using the classical Germanic of chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ito ay by Imran. So, meaning, uh, ako ay panelist, binigyan ako ng kopya ng publishable paper. Okay. So, ang ibigay sa akin is already a peer review form. So that I will be able to scrutinize the merits of the paper for publication. Panel pa ako. And so, my inputs, therefore, will be useful to clean the paper, you know, for other purposes. So, can you scroll down? So, this is an example of a peer review form na nafilapan. Hindi na namin nilagay lahat kasi nga nakakasagwa na very, very heavy na yung papel na yan. Okay, so, ito yung resulta sa peer review. Para maniwala talaga ang tao na meron kang peer review. Okay. Then after that, narito yung isang journal na naman. Okay, nandito sa Scopus, ano ang queue niya. Alright, the next. Okay, ito o. Oh. Oral presentation na paper 1, RRL. And then, ito yung book of abstract niya. Uh, ito yung abstract na may mukha, may logo ng country, may logo ng kumpanya niya. And then after that, nanalo pa siya. Imagine, RRL. Now, I would like to be telling you this because I'm very proud of this accomplishment. Okay. I checked the web for seven days to see if the World Academic Community has done a conference exclusive for research review of the literature. None. So therefore, I was the first person in the planet to do a conference exclusive for RRL. So nagawa na namin yan. Okay. So therefore, this is a certificate para nagpapatunay na siya ay nag-present. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay. Next is, uh, if you can see this uh, Appendix 34, Facebook page on career change for overseas Filipinos. Sabi ko sa kanya, kailangan na mas mahaba ang buhay sa research mo kaysa sa'yo. O, diba? Kasi ang research natin na hindi kinakain ng COVID, ang tao kinakain ng COVID, so pili tayong mamatay ahead of our study. So, ito is a public forum. Marami ng mga, mga tao ang sama nito. Career Change for Overseas Filipinos. Ang administrator nito ay si Jeffrey Oy, yung may-ari ng study. Sabi ko, hindi ko yan pirmahan pag walang ganyan. May isa sang bagay na hindi pa niya nagawa pero natapos na yung study, yung video blog na dapat ay nandoon sa YouTube channel. He was not able to do that or maybe he was not able to give me the the the, the documentation like this. Okay. After that, we go to the next page. 
Okay, ma- maingyan niya kayo nito. Evidence of Research Gate Article Inclusion. Kasi, pag researcher ka, whether you're a teacher or whether you're a student, whether you're coming from senior high, college, or graduate school, kailangan malista ka sa mga global databases. di ba? Kung naniniwala ka sa Panginoon, dapat milon ka rin simbahan at relihiyon para maklasify ka kung ano kang uring tao. Okay. So, katulad nito, uh, so, write that, researchgate.net. Kailangan mo member ka doon because your full your full thesis or your full dissertation, ipasok mo doon after na-publish na lahat. Okay. And then, yung mga publication mo, kahit saan niya napunta, meron kang pre-print na digital form, ipasok mo dito. Because this was about 300 million accounts all over the world. And so, the moment na ilagay mo dito ang iyong mga publications, okay, ang mangyari dito is that you will be read by the people of your own time. So, sabi ko sa kanya, hindi ka pwede maging doktor kung hindi ka namimbro ng mga ganito. Kasi ayoko maging kulorum ka na parang kang taong walang binyag. Okay. Then after this, we go to the next slide. Uh, what is this? This is the Google Scholar Citation. Because that is an account. Okay, I, w- I will have that uh, mamayang hapon uh, towards the menu. And then another one, evidence of Google Scholar article inclusion. Na nandito na sa Google Scholar. Okay? Para walang dayaan. Evidence of academic article inclusion. Academia. Kasi, di ba, researchgate.net. Meron pa tayong Google Scholar Citations account. Meron pang academia.edu. Ito na yun. Na meron, member din siya doon sa academia.edu. The next one. Evidence ng Mendeley. Mendeley? Okay. And the next slide. Okay. Ah. Dapat, ang sojanti at teacher, merong LinkedIn. The world's largest network of professionals. Para meron ka ng mga networks. The next one is or seed. Na meron kang ID, serial number na you are counted sa buong mundo as a researcher. Na meron kang 16 digit number na, na ID. Oh, yun. All right. Next after that. And then National Research Council of the Philippines kasi, 'di ba, ang requirement naman ng NCP is only 3 articles that are published. Ang kanya apat, sabi ko, "Hoy, mag-apply ka na." Bahala na kung ma-reject ka o hindi, basta mag-apply ka na kasi you have gotten the three minimum requirements. Uh, hindi kita tatantanan pag hindi ka mag-apply. Hindi na ako ang mag approve At least on your own, at my own, uh, ikaw ay nakapag-apply na sa National Research Council of the Philippines. Kasi kung researcher ka, whatever you have achieved, how many citations, kulorum ka pa talaga, pag hindi ka naging member sa National Research Council of the Philippines, kasi ito lang kinikilala ng buong bansa na listahan na mga lihiti mo na mga researcher ng bansa. Okay. Because there is a requirement per number of number of scientists per million population. Malayo pa tayo. So, kailangan na maging member tayo nito. Sabi ko sa kanya, mag-apply ka na membership. Okay. Sir, ma- matanggap kaya, bahala na, basta nag-apply ka na. Okay, next slide. Okay, ito na yung National Research Council. Oh, ano ang Q ng journal? Q3. Okay. Kasi ganito, highest is Q1, the lowest is Q4. So, um, I understand that some of you are coming from the SUCs, mga professional researchers na gustong mag-publish sa Scopus. But let me just say this, ang Scopus, dahil, dahil nag-upgrade sila ng quality nila, uh, merong tinatawag na delisting program. By delisting program is meant that some journals that did not anymore have the citations amount needed kasi meron silang benchmark na dapat a journal that is performing well should have this number of of impact factor okay pag hindi niya na meet for whatever reason kasi wala namang hindi naman kasalanan ng journal pag ngayon ay walang wala magsa-cite eh kasi ang citation naman you cannot dictate on paper hey, hey cite me di ba okay Eh, yun nga mga ano, yun nga mga cool girl at mga cool boy, hindi man talaga nila maalam kung meron ba silang mga ano, mga kliente sa araw na yan. ba? And so, I am saying this because kung ako ay magpapublish ngayon but magparank ako next year, o hindi ako magpunta sa Q4. Kasi ang Q4 nakakumbitay na yan. Ang sunod niyan, matanggal na. ba? So, which means na 
Next year pa, I should go to at least sa Q2 at Q1. Huwag ka na mapunta doon sa Q1. Muna. For your status nga, isodyante ka pa. Kasi ang mga Q1 journals, even the Secretary of Department of Science and Technology, nahirapan magpasok dyan. Even the Dean of De La Salle University, nahirapan magpasok dyan sa Q1. Kasi yung Q1, yun na yung mga world readers, the top 1,000 authors of the field. So, ikaw, sama ka doon? Diba? Kung mga vision tayo, kinakalangan naman na attainable. O, diba? Ayun. Pero at least, kung nasa Q2 at Q3 ka, kung, mag- kung magbaba man yung citation count ng journal, eh, masagip ka pa sa Q4 for next year. Eh, kung Q4 ka na ngayon, na nagtipid ka sa bayad, eh, di pag next year, hindi na makita doon sa website kasi nga nalista na sa delisted. Get? Get that point? Okay. Next. So, which means na yung bayad din sa mga tao na nag-publish will be differentiated. Q1, magkano? Q2, magkano? Q3, magkano? Q4, magkano? Yung mga walang Q, pero kasama pa rin sa emerging sources, meron din tayong ibibigay sa kanila. Nasa Scopus na nga, pero wala pa silang Q. Okay. Awesome. That is another one. Kasi, there are three kinds of, three levels of quality in journal. High impact, medium impact, low impact. ba? Diba? I would add no impact. Meaning, wala pa mga citations sa journal, o oh, yun, ang no impact. Pero pag meron ng low, then meron tayong medium, meron tayong high. Ayun. Yan, yan. Next slide. Okay. So, sunod dito. Ano to? Google Scholar Metrics of Publishable Paper. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Okay. So, di ba, ang, ang, ang yung article is published in a journal. You copy the title of the journal, open a new tab, and then type ka ng Google Scholar Metrics, ipasok mo doon kung talaga bang nakalista siya sa buhay ng, sa listahan ng mga buhay. Okay. Kasi, pag ang journal naman ay, ano, um, you know, mga, nandoon na sa mga scopus, usually, meron silang Google Scholar Metrics. Yes. Then, next slide. And then, next is this one. Oh. CV. Why I included the CV? Gatsi ganito. Di ba, meron siya mga professional qualification. The next slide, yung baba. baba uh, kailangan na pag mag-CV ka, pakailaman ko yun. Because I want to in- to you to include in your CV your list of publications na dito na. Ang publications niya. List of oral presentations na dito na rin. And then sa CV niya, list of professional organizations na dito na. Yung mga Reses Kate, yung mga Orsid, yung mga ganyan. Di ba? Uh, all right, that is also included this scientific affiliation. So kung tayo ay advisor, di ba? Kung tayo ay general, bago ka magpadala ng tao doon sa bakbakan, hindi mo siya i-train na magamit na lang siya ng garan na, di ba, yung, 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 yung baril na kahoy. Kaya ako hindi ako naniniwala sa ROTC. Kasi nang gamit ako sa ROTC, hindi man ako makapatay ng ahas o timos o kung ano ba, cockroach. Why? Marcha kami ng marcha doon sa Divine World Cup at Tagbilaran, pero kaho yung ginamit namin. At the same time, yung 10 years old na NPA, machine gun na ginamit nila. So, anong laban ng ating mga, mga kasundaluhan? Kung ganyan man lang, di ba? So, kailangan na tama yung bala pagpasok doon sa field. So, ito, ganyan. Alright. Then, scroll down. Pero sa ba? Okay. So, um, I presented you this because I want you to see na it can be done. I designed this together with the Acostas on Dr. Malagapo of the Middle East. And then it works. Okay? All right. And then I post my teaching there kasi busy ako sa consultant ngayon. I am doing consulting work with the Recolitos system of the Philippines. So they are my clients. I am taking care of eight um, USGR ano, um, uh, Recolitos schools, yung mga San Sebastian, mga ganyan sa Bansan Sebastian College de Manila, the UNOR of uh, Bacolod, and things like that. And then, I'm also helping the Don Bosco. Okay, particularly the one in Victoria Street Gross, no? So, I said, mag-post muna ako doon. You can invite me for oral defense, but no longer to teach. Okay. I would like to post because I want to... You know, I'm, I'm excited about what is your take on the things I'm presenting you, no? All right. So, um, sir... Okay, um, can we have a, a, a short um, a reaction time? Okay, Sir Jean. Um, indeed, no? Kulang talaga ang time for Sir Jean no, to be our speaker. No? 
<laughs> Kulang yung hapon. Ay! That's Lord. why we ha- will have Sir Jean the whole day. no? So, uh, advance information lang. Uh, this activity will be a whole day event. no? So, we will keep uh, Sir Jean until this afternoon. Uh, meron pang continuation. No? So, at this moment, uh, we'll just read no, yung mga comments doon sa ating or perhaps questions no you can write it in the chat box if you have an immediate uh, question or queries to Sir Jean um, uh, for the moment uh, Sir Jean it's more on mga complementing words po of your uh, great discussion uh, from uh, Agusan Colleges uh, Dr. Nelia I'm enjoying here learning is fun uh, Sir Josetis Manuel uh, uh, is asking the link of the downloadable uh, sample study. It's here, sir. Uh, ayan, it's also uh, being posted again in our chat box. You can just uh, click the link po. Uh, from Normi, uh, Dr. Ojeda, uh, she said, Thank you, Sir Jean, for sharing your expertise with us. With you more. Miss you. And uh, yan, talagang they enjoyed Sir G, no? yung yung inyong discussion. Um, so, so far, wala namang uh, questions po or queries. I think nag enjoy lahat ang ating mga uh, participants. And ako, nakida- nag-download na rin ako, Sir G, no? yung, yung sa link that was shared. And I think uh, lahat din no? ng participants uh, downloaded yung... Uh, document that you shared um, Imra, Imrad sample po ng uh, study by uh, I think that was uh, Sir Jeffrey Puy no? so uh, from uh, Dr. Malazarte of Andres Soriano Colleges of Bislig uh, the president of Andres Soriano Colleges of Bislig thank you for that input very insightful okay, that's from Dr. Malazarte so, so far, uh, yun lang po. And again, update, no? Uh, tumataas po yung ating um, number of participants who registered, no? Uh, and also sa live streaming natin. So, um, instead na yung research topic is parang uh, usually boring and not really interesting, no? Or uh, interesting uh, at the start but it's difficult to sustain but with Sir Jean uh, habang palalim palalim ng ang discussion more people are becoming interested sa discussion and again I would like to invite everyone uh, we will have Sir Jean for the whole day and this afternoon so uh, please uh, be with us no? Uh, wag nang mag log out uh, you can just uh, turn off your video. Uh, we will use the same uh, Zoom uh, credential no? for this afternoon. And please invite others no? available in your school, your mga students, faculty, and staff to join us in the afternoon session. Um, another uh, word spoke from uh, St. Paul University. Uh, from Ma'am Marife, lively and very informative Doc Hapos. God bless you more. From Adsco, thank you for the upgraded input, sir. We love to hear from your talk. Okay. And also from, uh, from Dr. Nelia of Agusan Colleges, I gained many insights that I may apply in our graduate studies at Agusan Colleges. I hope to have you with us at your convenient time. Ayan, sir, may mga advance invitation na kayo, Sir Jean, no? And meron <laughs> mga uh, contact numbers si Sir Jean posted sa kanyang uh, name, no? Sa profile name niya. So, you can just keep it and uh, contact Sir Jean uh, if you have, if you want to invite him. Uh, from uh, Sir Elvira Pasagi, nice to hear practical tips in research writing. So, a lively discussion. I hope bumalik na kuryente namin habang may uh, battery pa ako. No? Ah, nag-brown out yata yung sa from Tracy Martyrs City College. Nag-brown out sa kanila and 
Cavite. Uh, opo. Okay. Um, another words of compliment, uh, Sir Jean Duke, for me, as a beginner in the research world. Ah, tanong niya, Sir, can you recommend books or any websites on the basics of making research? I'm a first year. Ah, studyante. Uh, Maraming yes, resources ang ibibigay ko um, this afternoon. So, okay. where to find the websites that you can get things for free, saan ka mapunta, and then mga software. So, kung meron kayong mga credit cards, dala kayo mamaya so that you will know where to buy and how. Kasi, yeah. kailangan talaga na mag-invest tayo sa mga software. Bili. Hindi pwede na yung panday, pagkunin mo siya, sasabihin mo sa ma'am, nasaan ang martilyo mo? Hindi pwede ganun. Kailangan na meron tayong sariling mga armas. Armas di Fuego. Okay. At saka mura. I will bring you to a website na hindi lang nagtitinda ng mga bra at mga damit kung at kaldiro. Nagtitinda rin sila ng software na ang murang-mura na pag ayaw pang bumili, magagalit na sa'yo si Satanas. Kasi mura-mura na talaga. Okay. <laughs> ayan. So, okay. Ayan. So, I think, ayan. So, sabi ni Sir G, no? Uh, please be with us this afternoon. Marami pang mga uh, advices or hints na ibibigay si Sir G for us. Uh, sabi niya, uh, we need to have books, references, no? Ito yung armas natin, no? When uh, doing research and uh, he will uh, give us yung mga sites, websites, no, for the references uh, that you can avail, no. Uh, be ready lang daw with your credit card, pero meron namang mga solid and affordable, no, that will be uh, uh, shared to us by Sir G na mga website. So, from uh, Franco uh, Bugia Pilayo, looking forward to more insights within the whole day. Yan. And again, yung contact number ni Sir Jean. Ayan, even yung kanyang uh, Gmail. Email ad, no? hinarohapos at gmail.com. You can see that in the our chat box. And also, his uh, contact number if you'd like to invite perhaps. I'm sure yung mga participants natin was able to attend already yung mga previous uh, seminar uh, conducted by Sir Hapos. No? So that's why they look forward to uh, see you today and uh, yung iba may plano pa no? to really invite you for their activities so uh, so far uh, yun lang po as of this moment sir so um, do you have some reminders sir Jean or uh, we'll have the break na lunch break okay but in the program kailan tayo mag -in? Uh, at 12, sir, or before okay. 12. So, sulitin natin. Okay. Oh, sulitin natin. Oo. Oh, oh. May mga tanong ka kayo dyan. Or mag magdagdag ako ng input. Okay. Ah, sige, sir. So, oh, okay. Kasi, uh, di ba, it's an opportunity. Alright. Thank you, sir. We are very much excited din, sir, sa mind. Oh, kasi ako, I do not want to hold anything. I want to give you all that I know within the given time. Kasi, di ba, oh, oh. ito ang kailangan ng bansa. Okay, damayan. Okay. okay, so um, how to do that, then this is the way to go. Alright, so I will show you yung uh, requirements kung ang tao ay magsasubmit ng title ng study. Okay, so let me show you this um, um, extract from a policy that we developed at St. Michael College of Caraga. Kung kailangan kayo mag-benchmark ng best practices ng research, you visit this school. Okay, so I was with um, Dr. Criseldo Kalinawan, who is now a software advisor of CHED. Okay, I'm also happy na he transitioned to CHED because his research expertise can be useful for the region and elsewhere. Okay, so let me show you this one. Assuming na um, mag, mag present ang sudyante ng title, so, research title justification form. Sa title pa lang, kailangan mag, meron na siyang preparasyon. So, uh, kasi nung una, di ba, parang bla 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 lang sa panel and then yun na, di ba? So, mas mabuti na pag mag-submit siya ng pos posibleng title, meron na siyang pila na form. And then, yung mga forms na ito, ibibigay ko sa inyo, kung gamitin niyo then we should be very, very happy. 
kasi napag-usapan na namin ito sa St. Michael College of Caraga that it being an educational institution that is Catholic and owned by the Diocese of Butuan, uh, it is willing to also you know assist the other institutions. So, num- number uno, isulat nila yung research title. Okay, fine. Now, I-, I would like to tell you what is the culture of writing the title. Anywhere in the world, I'll show it to you this afternoon. This afternoon, I'll show you na kahit Harvard, Diba? Kahit sa PubMed, kahit saan, always the method is part of the title of the study. So, research title. Number two, um, narrate the results of stakeholder interviews to support existence of the problem for research. Diba sabi ko, apat yung layers sa pag-interview. Yung primero, sa title pala, nag-interview na siya para hindi siya na nakakalutang. Diba? Okay, so, Um, there is a here he was in the interview with the mayor he said that, that this was corroborated by the Sangkani Panglungsod moreover kung sino yung mga interview na ilagay niya dito para malaman natin na hindi siya nagbala-bala okay number three a briefly cite authority authors and their okay so mabuti na pinalaki-laki alam mo naman ang mata natin pag tumatanda na marami na nakikita kasalanan na naintuyan na kasalanan kaya hindi na accurate na pagbasa <laughs> Okay, so briefly cite authors and their statement to support your problem, which are your compelling reason for the study. Okay, so my bibliography na title pa lang. Kasi pag wala siyang binasa, ano karapatan niya magsulat ng title? Number four, discuss how the problem can be solved. How it can be solved two ways. One, yung diba, tinanong mo na, yung problema sa tubig. Pa, ano kaya, pa, paano tayo marangkada nito? So you, you ask the people, ano ang kanilang vision? Okay, and then after that, you also, di ba, nagbasa ka rin, and then you also include from the readings, okay, how to solve the problem. Simple lang ha, if the study is water crisis, alright, then dapat ang iyong research ay ganito, best practices in solving the water crisis. Okay, pag ang, pag ang problem ay poor waste management doon, okay, then ang, ang, ang research mo ay best practices in waste management. So, yung mga best practices, yun ang isulat dito as, you know, how the problem can be solved. Imagine, sa title pa lang, alam na niya kung paano isolve yung problem. Number five, list bibliographic entries of scientific articles that support on your title. And the next, meron pa ba? Number five. Ah, meron pa. Number six. Yeah. Oh, six, mention the subjects or topics in your major field where your proposed title belongs. Hindi pwede na mag-thesis ka sa PhD in management pagkatapos hindi na no, hindi ito magagamit tumarang kada natin kung saan ito makunik. Okay? Kung ano something ba ito pwede? Kasi ang destinasyon ng thesis, ganito ha, ito ay best practice dapat isang para lang matino. Okay. Na yung lahat ng mga thesis ng isang field like Doctor of Business Ad, Master of Public Administration, ikatalog ang lahat ng mga thesis pagkatapos sa second column, ano bang subject nomenclature sa MPA program dapat ito ay required reading. Kasi sa mga subjects dapat built in na nila ang pagbasa ng mga thesis na gawa ng paralan para meron na silang you know, na assure na sila sa kultura sa pagsusulat. Kasi it will be a tragedy kung So, pumasa na sila sa kumpre, saka pa sila magtingin sa thesis. This is the number six. Because the inclusion of research, um, you know, this, this thesis and dissertation in the syllabus of the teacher is one of the highest levels of research utilization. Okay. All right. So, after that, it passed and then blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then, how do we evaluate that? Okay. So, to evaluate a research title, I also, we will also give you the format. Okay, ganito. Um, ano ba itong T1, T2, T3? Kasi sa kultura sa sa ICMCC, tatlo yung proposed titles. So, ito yung T1, Title 1, T2, Title 2, and T3, Title 3. Okay. Depende sa inyo. Pag gusto ninyo na isa lang, oh, fine. Okay. Uh, number one question. Is the research topic presented relevant to the current societal issues or technological trends of today's generation? Okay. Today's generation. Kasi dapat relatable sa mga generasyon nila. Okay. Number two, has clearly stated the problem to be solved, compelling reasons of the study as evidence of stakeholders' consultation. Meron ba? Check. 
has clear and concise understanding of how these issues can be solved. Title pa lang. Has impact and can be published in a referee journal. Sa title pa lang, parang mabili talaga doon sa mga journal. And then, follow the standard number of words for its research title, typically 10 to 12 or a little more long, uh, or a little more words. Six, congruent to the nature of the discipline of courses in whole. So, yun. All right. Okay. I, I, I'll give you an example and a case in point. Uh, be careful kasi um, in one of the universities that I went to, nagpaan nila ko doon sa criminology. Di ba? So, ang study doon ay the learning styles in relation to blah, blah, academic performance of students in criminology. Sabi ko, nasaan dito ang criminology? Iyan, sir. Students of criminology. Boy, nako iha. Ang criminology dito, address yan. Sa departamento. Okay. Ang learning style, hindi ito psychology. Okay. At yung grado nila, hindi yan criminology. Okay. So, ano ba ang criminology? Ballistics, forensic investigation. Di ba? Yung mga ganun na mga major field. Uh, gumamit ba sila ng mga, ano, mga, mga scene of the crime, mga soko. Yun ang, ano, yun ang research ng criminology. Sabi ko, ma'am, bakit nagka ganito? Eh kasi sir, taga-kasman ako, English teacher ako, malay ko ba kung ano yung pinag-usapan nila. Yun nga ang dahilan na pag ang nagtulo ng research ay hindi taga-field na yan, okay, magkakaroon talaga tayo ng ano, this oras na gloria. So, pag, pag walang qualified, eh, dapat team teaching. May isang taga-cast na marunong sa, sa methodology, pagawa ng thesis, may isa naman na partner niya para doon sa content na, boy, hindi pwede ang ganyan kasi they are pag-criminology. O, di ba? Okay. The multiple intelligences of the nursing student. Ha? Huh? Ano yan? Nandun ba sa pharmacology? Nasaan yan? Sa maternal child care? Nasaan yan? Di ba? Uh, hospital um, bedside care? Wala. So, ano yon? Blah, blah. Eh, why? Oh my God. This is called academic schizophrenia. Magtingnan mo naman talaga, the only indicator that that is coming from the field is the address, which is the name of the college. That is a tragedy. So, kailangan congruent to the nature of the discipline or course enrolled. Okay. Next, suggestions to improve the priority title. Okay, yan. Okay. Then after that, ano ang sunod? Okay, review of the related literature. So, we will show you how you are going to evaluate that. Kasi, ang maganda dito ha, please don't get me wrong. Iyon bang ang teacher palagi ang nag-evaluate kung tama o mali is a thing of the past. Di ba? Kinuha na ni Lord ang ganyang mga practitioner. Okay. Dapat ang mga, ang mga templates na ganito, ang unang magsagot, mag-answer ay ang bata, ang isodyante. We call that self-ratings niya. And then kung may hindi pa siya na purga na na-comply niya, gagawa pa siya ng paraan para makumply niya. Pag makumply niya, punta sa, sa kanyang advisor para ma-check. Okay. Saka pa i-pass doon sa research panel. Di ba? Hindi pwede na ang research panel ay ano na, tag, uh, parang mga pulis, tagahanap ng mga ma, mga kriminal, tagahanap ng mga mali. Because that is, what, that is usually what happens. Alam mo kasi, problemado dito sa research panel. Let me give you kung may problema ka sa research o hindi. A normal thesis defense is only between 30 minutes to 45. If your oral defense is more than 45, including 2 to 3 hours, isa lang ibig sabihin doon, kulang kayo sa tamang pag-iisip. Kulang kayo ng quality assurance. Meaning, meaning, okay, Kumain na kayo, niluluto pa yung iba sa kusina. Dapat ready na ang lahat, tikman mo na lang lahat. Okay. Now, you see, I want to clarify this. ba? By this imagery. Okay. Pag pagkakain tayo, merong kusina. Doon, ginihimbis yung isda. ba? Doon, kinakat yung karni, kinakat yung mga spices, niluluto. That is behind the scene. Okay. That is not the research panel office. Uh, na, 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 na event. Okay. Ang research panel ay natapos na lutuin, nakalagay na sa plato na maganda, meron ng mga garnishing, tapos ibigay na doon, and then the chef will come to test it and say, hmm, sobra yung soka. This is good. Ganyan. So, tapos na. Oh, nakakita ka ba ng ano, ng magjan sa mga master chef na hanggang isang tatlong oras? Pag determine nila kung ito ba ay makalaso na, na pagkain o hindi. Di ba? Seconds lang. Hmm. 
good. This is bad. O, di ba? Sasabihin ka agad. So, this is what is meant by quality assurance. Dapat, the action for quality assurance is in the kusina, not in the oral defense. That is why, what I taught, what I taught you this morning is that meron na tayong mga experts na mag-certify every inch of the way. May mga publications na before para ang problema natin na hindi lang natin nasusuno. Kasi, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko. Bakit ako, being a panelist, ay palagi maglulunok ng tai? I-share ko ang tai sa iba. Example, doon sa mga judges na mga conferences, magkain din sila ng tai. Okay. Eh, yung, mga, yung mga editors, magkain din sila ng tai. Ako lang ba? O ba? Diba? Ang sarap-sarap niyan kaya. So, i-share natin. Okay. So, meaning, we share the burden. Kasi ang nangyayari dito, ang panel lang talaga, my God. Hindi ko alam kung may statistic ka ba tayo. Ilan ang mga panel na lalason talaga sa binabasa nila. Kasi tayo pa maghanap ng magandang title, maghanap ng mga magagandang mga variables. Okay. Now, let me tell you, we have to put an end to that. Because one of the errors of paneling is when you suggest variables. Do not suggest variables. Because that is a sign of witchcraft. ba? Diba? The witches, you know, uh, will do their part magtimpla lang sila ng lugaw na malaking kawa and then yun why is that a form of witchcraft? because you cannot say dadagyan mo ng organizational climate wala kang readings bawal yun sabihin mo sa sosyante kulang independent variables mo ang mga kausalities dalawa lang I want to have 10 mag-search ka sa literatura I will teach you paano mahanap ang mayang hapon hindi pwede na ipasok 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 sino ka? di ba? nasasaniban ka ng espiritu na Einstein maka-invito ka ng mga variables na wala kang wala kang ibilisa mula sa literatura, that is not right. We have to put an end to that. Dapat hindi ang panel ang bibigay ng, ano, ng variables. Ang estudyante ang dapat maghanap. Kasi siya naman ang kakain niyan later. Okay, yun. So, what are the things um, you know, before 12 o'clock that we need to do? Okay, can you increase the rate? Kasi marami ng kasalanan na ito yan ang mata ko. Okay, can you increase the magnification? Okay, una. Okay. Does the title accurately reflect the review nature of the paper. Ito ha. Pag sumulat ka ng chapter 2 RRL, you have to identify what kind of a review is that. Is that a research review? Is that a literature review? Is that a meta-analysis? Is that a systematic review? Number two, does the abstract present an accurate synopsis of the review paper because that is going to be published? Is the introduction appropriate? Is the literature relevant and comprehensive? Sabi ko, ano ba naman ito ining mag- Magde-defend ka sa masters of your field. Tapos you only have 10 sources. Anong uri kang master? Hindi ko, mus- hindi ko gusto sabihin yung tamang word. Baka maintuyan mo pa. ba? Diba? Hindi maganda ganon. Kasi sabi ko, my expectation tayo sa SMCC, ang sinabi ko sa kanila is that pag senior high at college, dapat 500 minimum na annotated bibliography. Annotated. Meaning, kung ang bibliography na yon ay mayroong isang statement at the bottom. For example, blah, 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 yun ang bibliographic entry. Sa baba, this will be used when the hypothesis as evidence when the results of hypothesis number one will be rejected. O, yun. Number two na item, this will be useful as the theory of the study uh, during the proposal. Para malaman natin talaga kung binasa mo nila ang kanilang mga narilista doon. Pero sa finals na, of course, wala nang mga annotations kasi ready to eat na yon. Okay. Yun. And then, um, are, the, are the objectives clear and specific? Yun. Is there an identification of the type of literature review? I've said that already. Is the design of the study consistent with the aims and scope? Dapat, ang ating RRL ay merong studies in the local area. Okay, for example, if, if your topic is customer satisfaction, ang dinanggaling ka sa, for example, St. Paul University of Surigao, so, punta ka doon sa, ano, sa Google Scholar, And then, St. Paul University of Surigao plus customer satisfaction. Kung meron bang mga, mga articles doon. And then, Surigao City. And then, Philippines. And then, Singapore. And then, Malaysia. And then, Europe. And then, South America, North America. Ganyan. Ang pagkuha ng mga literatura. Is there a definition of the gap in the literature? Meaning, what else have not been found yet? Because ang RRL will fulfill four basic information. Ano ba yung four basic information na to? Una, it should describe to you what are the trends in the findings or results of the study in the planet. So example, most of the studies on this topic focus on experimental designs on this one. They explored on this particular topic. So 
yung mga, mga findings nila dapat i-note pa natin, i-classify kung ito ba ay about method, ito ba ay about what. And then, i-describe mo yun. That is the state of the literature for that particular field. Number one. Number two, based on this, ano pa ang kulang? What are lacking? Yun yung um, to be discovered yet, gaps in the literature. Kasi, hindi valid ang isang research kung walang gap in the literature. And then, thirdly, is that what are the potential for hypothesis development? Kasi, hypothesis is supposed to be developed from the literature. Okay. All right. And then, fourth is that what are the directions of further study? So, therefore, hindi valid ang isang thesis kung hindi matino ang kanyang RLM na pinanggaling niya. Okay. Next, number eight, ten. Are there leads into future studies emanating from the literature gap? Number 11. Meron bang analysis of the limitations and errors of the methods? Analysis and interpretation of studies being uh, reviewed. Ngayon. Is there, uh, for example, ha, number 11, na, uh, na-review mo siya na gumamit siya ng mga high-level na inferential tests, pero ang kanyang sampling ay non-probability. O mali yun. Kasi ang non-probability sampling, yung resulta ng research mo can only be useful to apply to that particular study. But you cannot cite that. Do not cite studies that do not have generalizability. Kasi patay ang hypothesis mo. Sabi mo, meron, meron, meron. Hindi, and wala pala. Kasi ang mga na-cite mong studies ay wala ng generalizability. Is there a visual illustration of the findings uh, for the synthesis of the review? Is there evidence from the literature that supports the hypothesis? Okay, example. Okay, mga estudyante, ilan mga hypothesis mo iya, tatlo. Okay, for example, number one. Okay, uh, there is no significant difference in the blah, blah, blah of male and female respondents. Sabi ko, okay, give me at least 10 to 20 na author na nagsabi na may kinalaman talaga ang gender doon sa kanilang pananaw. Wala po, sir. Delete. Hanggang walang ma? E1. Kasi, a hypothesis should have its own set of bibliography. Ito pa yung iba kung sasabihin sa inyo. Diba? Ganito ang, pag, ang pagturo sa bata for, for the teachers who are here today. Diba? The first part, introduction. Introduction itself, kailangan meron kang listahan ng bibliography. Example, Pedro. Ilan ba ang sources mo sa introduction? Binti. Dapat meron kang separate na listahan sa sources. Theoretical framework. Nasaan ang listahan ng sources mo? Sa methodology, nasaan ang listahan ng sources mo? Sa result and discussion, nasaan ang listahan ng sources? Okay, give me your problem one. Blah, 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 ito. What is the? Okay, nasaan ang bibliography mo for that? Okay, hypothesis number one, tell that to me. Okay, there is no something like that. Okay, where is your bibliography for hypothesis number one? So that, wala pa natapos yung study, meron ka ng sentence na nagawa na evidence from the literature has shown that Okay, for example, uh, emotional intelligence is a critical factor for um, teaching effectiveness. Parenthesis, sinong tao nang sabi ng ganun? And when you cite the authors, for example, lima sila, kailangan may technique. For example, statement, tapos parenthesis, okay. Or American author, year, semicolon. African author, year, semicolon. South American author, year, semicolon. Asian author, year, semicolon. And then Australian author, year, parenthesis, close parenthesis, period. So, meaning, that sentence is not innocent because it is the concurrence of five or more authors coming from different parts of the world. Ano po naman ang size na meron kang 20 na authors na coming lamang sa Cebu City? Di ba? 20 people saying the same thing about Cebu equals only one. But when you have 20 people coming from 20 different countries, oh my God, it's a global statement. Ganon siya. Is there evidence from the literature that supports the hypothesis? Are the hypothesis focusing on causality? Kasi sa Pilipinas, meron tayong malignant na disease. That our hypothesis is only focused on tests of variances of perception. Okay. That is not just there. Kailangan meron ka causality. What factors cause one particular variable to happen this way? And then, do the conclusions accurately reflect the objectives and results of the study? Is the literature cited of high standard indicating online, traceable, and reputable databases? This afternoon, I will teach you the criteria in evaluating a good reference. Okay. Kasi dapat ang isang sudyanti at a teacher na matino, kilala niya kung 
paano makilatis just by looking at the title kung iyon ba talaga ay magandang source. Is the paper complying with the requirements of scientific publication? Because the RRL is meant to be published. Okay, so that's it. Uh, is that all for for this part? Okay, so um, I'll pause for a while and I'd like to have some comments from you before we pause for lunch. At least nakabul tayo ng dalawa at tatlong slides, di ba? Sulitin na natin kasi let us let us make use of the opportunity that you and I are together because I want to fall in love with you much more. I also want you to fall in love with me, right? Because today, this morning, only you, all of you, can complete me. I live because I want to be completed by you. Thank you. So, let's proceed with the open forum, sir. Wow, thank you very much, uh, Doc G. You know, as, as commented by our Chief Education uh, Program Specialist, the Dr. Julia, Julia Felisa Martinez. Sabi niya, Doc G, you are the best. Thank you for your unselfish sharing and your expertise with all of us god bless no so although so much uh has uh, has been shared already by doc jean but of course uh, parang we want more parin from from doc jean no and uh yung kanyang enthusiasm in uh, imparting uh, his expertise on research and parang na na invite okay. na natin no so uh so so far uh, uh, I will ask uh, my partner here, um, Mr. Russell Obshuma, who is the Executive Director for the Asian Society for Teachers for Research, to post here sa ating chat yung mga, art, mga na present ngayon, so that you can get it. Okay, thank you very uh, much, Regina. No, that's also the uh, request of our participants, no, na meron silang mga copy, especially of that uh, assessment tool that we... Uh, showed earlier. And then uh, thank you to Dr. Cristaldo Kalinawan kasi um, sa kanyang panahon ito nagawa. Opo. Okay, thank you. Thank you also. Uh, ayan, yun, yun po yung mga uh, common uh, uh, words from our participants, uh, Sir Jean, no? mga compliments nila of uh, they are very thankful to hear your discussion. Very informative daw po that's coming from all over the region, no, mga uh, HEI presidents, uh, mga deans, faculty, may mga students din, and even outside the uh, Caraga region, no. So they are very thankful, very informative daw po yung uh, discussion niyo. So uh, so far, and uh, yeah, Mam Alma said uh, we we are looking forward. For the after afternoon session, that's also, I think, uh, the the impression of other participants na they will really attend. Kasi nga nakukulangan parin kami, although marami na nakabis <laughs> region pero para ang sarap oh. parin mga ma- makinig and to okay. learn more because uh, it's uh, we enjoyed, no? Learning is fun, no dull moment, kay Sir Jean, no? So, so far, yun lang naman po, Sir Jean. So, I think um, it's time. Time na po yes. that we can have our lunch break. So, reminders lang po to our participants. Uh, we will still use the same um, link, no? Zoom account, uh, credentials. Uh, wag na po tayong mag-leave sa Zoom ninyo. No? You can just turn off your video and mute. Then, we go back at around 1.30 po after our lunch break and also please invite other uh, available mga faculty students other key personnel po in your school to join us in the afternoon session so that they will also experience no the wonders of dr hapos in giving lectures no and um announcement lang po to our heis no uh, yung Schools who participated in our uh, best promotional video uh, is already uploaded in the Chad Caraga face, uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can start uh, casting your vote, no? Uh, heart reactions po for your video and uh, voting will end uh, 12 midnight today and the highest number with heart reactions for that video will be the winner for the People's Choice. 
So, uh, once again, thank you very much for your participation. 